whatever is in the forest has followed me home before and it's affecting my entire family. This is where the, the evil begins? Oh yes. yeah. <laughs> oh shit, yeah. we're now. If you go hiking far enough, cause it's, it's massive, you'll probably find a body out here. There have been so many satanic rituals here. People literally find pentagrams like carved out in the dirt. Do you think that this energy from the forest is affecting your family? I think so. It's kind of the same vibe as the forest. It's almost as if he's, or it, is teasing us. It's the same black figure that I see in the forest. Whatever it is likes to mess with people, and it likes to terrorize people. We came here to try and get some sort of an answer for you. I want to set up our devices and see if we can contact this thing. Watch out. A demon here. Ooh. This is nuts, bro. I can hear. No, I won't. Literally. It sounds like cartoon, like, oh, oh, oh. Like, dude, it's trying to convince you that it's not bad. This is used to be a huge ground to where people would bring bodies. We're gonna be going deep into the forest tonight on this investigation. He's here. Who the fuck is this guy? Might not even be able to get back, so we gotta fucking go. Oh, oh, oh. Is there a demon here? Where are you? A demon here. This is hell. This is like being in hell right now. Two young men accused of murdering a teenager as part of a satanic ritual. 10.23 this morning, uh, we had some one call in. Uh, human remains found in the wooded area. This road is pretty much in the middle of nowhere. Tonight, we're hearing from a firefighter who helped rescue a man in the Freetown State Forest. The man jumped off a rock ledge into the water, then didn't resurface. Mello says he and six other first responders carried the man a mile out of the Freetown State Forest. It's a very dangerous spot, though. Uh, we go to about a call there every year, every other year, uh, for something like serious like this. Police are looking for clues after finding a body in a creek. Investigators were searching the area for a missing person when they made the discovery. And now they're waiting for the coroner to identify who they found. Eric Kristen, the details of the murder are graphic and disturbing. And for years, the debate has raged over whether this killing was part of a satanic ritual. A Fall River man has been charged with murder after another man was found dead Tuesday night. She knew the body was discovered in a wooded area in Fall River. Our other top story at noon, more than a half dozen hikers have been found safe after they were lost overnight in the Freetown State Forest. A 65-year-old man was found dead in the woods this morning, and his body had been there for quite a while. State police are investigating the death of an individual found dead in the state forest this morning. At around 5 a.m., hunters found the body in the forest and called police. This morning, a warning for hikers. This is scary to think about. It is. It's worrisome for anybody out on these trails. The impacted areas are in the southeast region of the state. The Department of Conservation and Recreation specifically received reports of wires being strung in Freetown. The Freetown State Forest is a place out of nightmares, frankly. This is a place you don't want to be at night. I mean, this is a forest known for satanic murders, for unsolved murders, for bodies being buried, for sightings of Bigfoot, UFOs, demons, ghosts. Every single paranormal event under the sun has happened inside of the Freetown State Forest. And the forest itself sits in the dead center of the Bridgewater Triangle, one of the most inexplicable paranormal triangles in the world, right next to the Bermuda Triangle. Frankly, this place is terrifying. I've been there before. I swear to God, we heard Bigfoot when I was there back in 2018. It was a metallic sounding howl that echoed from somewhere deep in the woods. It's unlike anything I've ever heard, but that's a whole different story. I just remember the last time being at the Freetown State Forest being scared shitless. Something happened to me while I was in there and I literally ran from the woods to the car. And this night, this night was no different. And in fact, this night turned into something much worse and much more shocking, actually. You guys aren't, aren't ready for what we're about to show you. So Freetown State Forest, I mean, forests anywhere you go are usually pretty creepy. I mean, you don't know what's out there in the woods, but I don't think I really understood how dark and ominous that this night would get. There's something about a forest at night making you feel like you're always being watched. But when you add it being haunted on top of that, you don't even know where these people are watching you from, but you know that they are. 
Before we get into our investigation, though, I feel like I need to give you guys a little bit of history about the Bridgewater Triangle, some of the satanic murders that happened there, and yeah, just some of the crazy shit that happens in the middle of those woods. The Freetown State Forest is known as one of the most haunted forests in America for a reason. It sits in the center of a paranormal vortex known as the Bridgewater Triangle, where for decades, people have reported all sorts of disturbing and interesting paranormal phenomena. The Freetown Fall River State Forest itself is a large area of forest, about 5,000 acres, in an otherwise densely populated area. The forest area and surrounding settlements themselves had significance during the King Philip's War, otherwise known as the deadliest war in American history, not because it was the site of any particular battles, but more due to the fact that the territory was often contested and went back and forth in ownership between the Wampanoags and the English due to the always shifting alliances and backhanded betrayals that were typical of the war. It's unknown how many people were murdered on those grounds during that bloody war, but the shallow graves of both colonial settlers who were killed during the fighting and of indigenous tribespeople are scattered throughout the woods. In the middle of the forest lies an old quarry, now known as The Ledge, which is the epicenter of a lot of the paranormal reports there. In fact, The Ledge is famous because Ronald Reagan once claimed that he saw phantom lights and a UFO in the sky while hiking at that spot. The Ledge, unfortunately, has also become a hotspot for people to take their own lives, and the place even has its own famous ghost, the Lady of the Ledge, a phantom woman seen on moonlit nights. The granite pulled out of this area back when it used to be a quarry was also used to build a nearby abandoned Taunton State Hospital, a mental asylum, the grounds of which are apparently haunted as well. The Freetown State Forest is also home to the Pukwudgies, who are trickster earth elemental spirits, much like trolls or elves from the Wampanoag myth. It's said that Pukwudgies aren't the friendliest to humans, and they were feared creatures. Interestingly enough, there continue to be Pukwudgie sightings in the forest to this day. The forest is most infamous, however, for its association with dark, disturbing crimes. In the late 70s, the body of a 15-year-old girl named Mary Lou Arruda was found tied to a tree. She had been abducted from a nearby town, assaulted, and left tied to a tree deep in the woods. Her body wouldn't be found for a while after the crime, and when it was discovered, it was rotted and almost unrecognizable. Just a year or so later, the Freetown State Forest was known to be the playground of Carl Drew, Robin Murphy, and their satanic Fall River cult. If you don't know the story of the Fall River cult murders, I would highly suggest that you check it out for yourself. But to sum it up quickly, the first murder, that of 17-year-old Doreen Levesque, was committed on the night of October 13, 1979. Her body was found under the bleachers of Demon Regional Vocational Technical High School in Fall River the following morning. No person was ever convicted of Doreen's murder, and it remains unsolved to this day. The murder of the next victim, 19-year-old Barbara Raposa, was committed on November 7, 1979, almost a month later, but her body was not discovered until January 26, 1980. A man named Andy Mel Tice, a man suspected of being involved with the satanic Fall River cult, was eventually convicted and sentenced to life in prison without the possibility of parole for the Raposa murder, but the theory remains that there were more people involved in that killing than were brought to justice. The third murder, that of 20-year-old Karen Marsden, is thought to have been committed on February 8, 1980. Portions of her skull were discovered on April 13th of that same year. Her body has never been recovered. Multiple individuals were charged in the Marsden murder, but only Carl Drew, the leader of the satanic cult, and Robin Murphy, his disciple, were convicted. Carl Drew was convicted at trial and sentenced to life in prison without the possibility of parole and Robin Murphy pleaded guilty to second-degree murder as part of an agreement to testify on behalf of the prosecution and claimed that Carl Drew set up and orchestrated the killing. This short summary doesn't really illustrate how deeply disturbing these murders were or their inherent connections to the Freetown State Forest, so I'm going to read you an excerpt from an article published in a local newspaper that provides some more details. The story covered the beginning of the second week of the trial of Carl Drew, then 26, a Fall River pimp and self-proclaimed devil worshiper. Carl was on trial for the February 1980 murder of Karen Marsden, a Fall River prostitute, whose skull and other remains were found in a wooded area of Westport in April the same year. While on trial for Marsden's murder, Carl was also under indictment for the October 1979 killing of Doreen Levesque, another Fall River prostitute. Prosecutors claimed Carl Drew called himself the Son of Satan and killed Marsden because she had been present at the Levesque murder months earlier. The story said the star witness for the prosecution, Robin Murphy, an 18-year-old prostitute who made a deal with prosecutors for testifying against Carl, said she killed Marsden and was possessed by Satan when she murdered the young woman. She wouldn't have killed her otherwise because they were lesbian lovers and roommates. At the trial, Murphy said that she, Carl, and two others had driven Karen to a wooded area of Westport where they got out of the car, and Carl began dragging Karen through the woods by her throat and hair. 
Carl told Karen to give Murphy a ring she was wearing, but she refused, so Carl cut her finger off to get it. Murphy then further testified that Karen cried that God would help her after Carl told her she was going to suffer. Carl then threw Karen on the ground several times, and Murphy said she heard her neck snap. Then Carl handed her a knife and ordered her to cut Karen's throat. And what did you do? asked the prosecuting attorney. Cut her throat, Murphy responded softly. After that, Carl tore her head from her body. He just yanked and kicked the head, she said. Carl then carved an X into the victim's chest and spoke a different language, then put his thumb into her blood and made an X on Murphy's forehead and told her she was a member of the satanic cult. This ritual was similar to the one performed in October when Doreen Levesque was killed, Murphy said. In a packed and shocked courtroom, she also described seances led by Carl, who used the same incomprehensible speech to conjure the devil at satanic meetings held at the Freetown State Forest. A skull and a substance Murphy believed to be blood were also used in the seances in the forest. On cross-examination by the defense attorney, she said she attended 10 such cult meetings in the woods between October of 1979 and February of 1980, including the two meetings where Levesque and Marsden were killed. The killing of Doreen Levesque was an offering of the soul to Satan, and so was the killing of Miss Marsden, she said. So it was essentially the Freetown State Forest that served as the ritual grounds for this demented satanic cult. To this day, people in the area theorize that the cult may have had more victims, that more local missing persons cases may be connected to the cult, and that the cult included members that reached all the way to the business elite, the rich people in Fall River, Massachusetts. But the true victim count remains a mystery. The location of Karen Marsden's headless body also remains a mystery. Maybe it's somewhere in the Freetown State Forest. For years, rumors have also circulated that the Freetown Forest cult tortured, mutilated, and murdered people in a place called the Ice Shack, which was found deep in the Freetown State Forest. Although it's widely suspected that these acts occurred there, it was never proven. At around the same time that detectives were uncovering the truth behind the Fall River cult murders, investigators also uncovered an underground bunker deep in the forest complete with creepy old children's toys, baby dolls, and a child's chair with restraints. The theory is that this bunker was used by a local couple that, at the time, in the newspapers had been accused of molesting their child in a satanic ritual. Although it was never officially proven by the police to be linked, the theory still runs strong today and the bunker has never been explained. Weird occurrences and crimes have continued over the last 30 years in the forest, including the murder of a homeless individual in 1987, two men that were shot and killed in the forest in 2001, hazardous waste dumping, roving packs of aggressive dogs, mutilated cows that were found in the woods drained of their blood, and in 2015, someone was stringing wire between trees to harm dirt bikers. This person, who put up these wires, who still has never been caught, strung metal wire between the trunks of trees hoping that motorbike riders would hit the wire going at a high speed and it would decapitate them or seriously harm them. So, to put that into perspective, in 2015, someone was booby-trapping the woods with metal wire hoping to cut people's heads off. So, if there's a forest that's going to have an evil, dark, demonic presence, it's definitely the Freetown State Forest. I don't really even need to say much more. So, to start our investigation, a few months ago, I got an email from a woman named Tori. Now, Tori wrote me saying paranormal 911 need help. And she was talking about how her family was experiencing a dark, violent, kind of evil seeming haunting in their apartment. And she thinks it came from the Freetown State Forest. So obviously that was compelling to hear. I reached out to her and finally on this trip, we were able to link up with her. So yeah, this story gets dark and twisted, but before we get into her apartment and the serial killers and everything, I'm going to let Tori take us on a tour of some of the spookiest spots where she's experienced things inside of that forest. So we went out there last night and immediately i just felt like there was something wrong i went from like we were what was i like very talkative at the beginning mm -hmm. and then i just went silent what? i felt like so depressed like something was changing my mood and then as we got further down and we turned around at the end he started to get really panicky and i kept i kept feeling like we were being watched basically and i feel like that all the time when we're there but this time it was way worse and he's usually like cool calm and collected as long as he doesn't like have to get out of the car 
and he started to like get really panicky he was like we have to get out of here like i don't yeah he could like he felt like he couldn't breathe and about halfway through of getting back out i just got hit with like this wave of sadness and i just started crying and then i was fine and then i started crying again it was so weird and it kind of alarmed me because prior to that i started crying at home because i think whatever is in the forest has followed me home before and it's affecting my entire family. My mom is a skeptic, but she's terrified to stay home alone. And my brother, he he will literally keep all of the lights on in every single room in the house, even if he's not in that room. He's petrified and he's only 14, so it's kind of alarming. And um, so we're gonna take you to some of the spots that have kind of... A lot of activity. Yeah, it's so you you think that this attachment came from one of these areas? Yes. Um I guess we can talk about it more once we get there. Yeah, and there's one specific spirit that um I believe has been seen where we live and I think she's the one that's affecting my moods. Her story is super super tragic and i can understand why i'm getting hit with like waves of sadness and feeling like i can't breathe and in some parts of the forest as soon as we get to those spots from the neck up i get sharp pains in like my upper spine i have headaches i feel like i'm gonna pass out um i get really sick there have been times when we came out and at those spots i literally was like i have to go to sleep because I can't deal with this. Like, I just, I can't deal with it. It's so bad. (laughs) What am I getting myself into? (laughs) (laughs) uh, The forest is no joke. Like, there have been so many, like, public figures that have come out here, and they literally left and was like, I'm never, ever coming back here. John F. Kennedy, right? Uh, Ronald Reagan. Ronald Reagan. Reagan. (laughs) Yeah. Yep. That's crazy. Mm Mm-hmm. Well, I guess let's, let's get started. Absolutely. When you guys are ready. (laughs) I'm going to turn off this light so you can actually see. Um, Copy Cut Road is the beginning of like the entrance to the forest. This is where we were originally going to meet, but there's, it's so dark out here. We didn't want your car to get hit. This is kind of where the energy starts to. And one other thing is there's train tracks down here. Nothing ever happens in this area, but once you pass those train tracks, that's when it starts to feel a little weird. Really? Yeah, as soon as we passed those train tracks last night, I just like shut down. There was one time we were leaving and uh, as soon as we passed over those, I felt totally fine. Like nothing was gonna happen, it's totally normal. What do you guys think that is? I personally, so before we came to the forest last night, we went to So the spirit that I think is trying to contact me, we went to her memorial and I did an Estes method with him. I was trying, we were trying to talk to her, let her know that we were coming into the forest, if she wanted to talk to us, if she needed to say anything, to, you know, kind of be louder because there's a negative energy here that tries to kind of silence her every time we do the Estes method. And, um... Are these the tracks, by the way? Yep. Yeah. This is where the, the evil begins. Oh, yes. yeah. <laughs> oh, shit. We're f- now. We're at the starting line. No turn back. <laughs> and, um, sorry, I get like a little panicky when we go over the tracks. Um, the minute that we kind of got near the forest, I felt like something wrong was around us. Like, I just didn't feel right. And then we got over those tracks and my like just every part of me just shut down and i just went silent just and, last night yeah this was last night it was what like 1 a.m yeah about that. that's when we got here yeah because we were we were doing this until like 5 or 6 a.m and but your attachment has been a thing for a long time now because you emailed me like months ago yeah so i have had these experiences since i was a child And my mom always said it was, like, imaginary friends. Like, she's just being a kid. And so she kind of ignored it. And so I stopped talking about it. 
I didn't know what if there was something wrong with me like if I was going crazy like I just like didn't tell anybody for a really long time after that and then I started sleepwalking and this I was like five or six years old I started sleepwalking I ended up in places that I shouldn't have ended up in like I got stuck behind an entertainment center that was screwed into the wall what yeah How's that even possible? I don't know. To this day, we do not know how I got in there. It took her forever to find me because I literally, like, I couldn't move to show her where I was. It was traumatizing. Yeah, that's crazy. And then I ended up, she had a bed that kind of had baseboards on the side. And this was way before my brother was born, too. And so nothing could get in and nothing could come out. And I woke up because... I just like jumped up and I smacked my head on something and I was like okay I'm not in my bed because I wouldn't have smacked my head and so I'm like trying to crawl out from wherever I am and I feel wood and so my thought was that maybe I was abducted maybe I was trapped in a box I don't know where I am I started freaking out and I started kicking the wood and I hear my mom and I'm like oh my god it's happening again and so she had to get a screwdriver and open the baseboards under her bed to get me out. What? Yeah. That's insane. Yeah. And now it's happening to my brother. And when he sleepwalks, he gets violent. Oh God. He came in my room one night and he got in my face and he just tore my bedroom apart. And then I finally got him to like calm down and he was still sleepwalking at this point and he just like started cursing at me and like he's he's very protective of me and my mom because it's just us three so I know this isn't like him he just walks out of my room leaves my door wide open walks out into the pitch dark into the rest of the house and just goes to bed like nothing happened he didn't remember a single thing the next day he didn't even believe me that's crazy Yep, he was sleeping over his friend's house, like one or two houses down. He got up out of his um, friend's bed. No shoes, no shirt, n his phone, his keys, nothing. And walked home and just stood outside of our front door. Wow. His friend followed him home to make sure that he was okay. Because he didn't know what was going on. Do you think that this energy from the forest is affecting your family? I think so. Yeah. It's either that or something that has been with me since I was a kid. I mean, even if it's something that was with you since you're, you were younger, I'm sure coming out here and attracting something else definitely wouldn't help. Yeah, it definitely <laughs> made it worse. Especially I'll say. with your visions and the stuff that you've experienced, the mm -hmm. activity that's happening here and at your place, it's crazy. Yep. It happened last night. I kept seeing, so. The girl that we're talking about, how she died, she was tied to a tree. And I kept seeing this image in my head as we were driving through to get out of like this circle and there's trees around it and there's a tree in the middle and it's kind of slanted and you can see like markings in it. And every time I tried to think about something else to forget about it, I started getting like sharp pains in my head. And it like, it scared me so bad because I didn't know what was going on. And I told him, I was like, every time I try to think about something else or I get distracted from whatever I'm seeing, it hurts. Wow. Why, why do you, why, well, I guess I'll just wait till we get out of the car to have <laughs> you explain like who the girl is. You've seen red eyes in there? In the woods, yeah. I, I, you have, right? Yeah. Um... I've seen eyes start down here and go up. And as soon as I say something, it's like they blink and they're gone. God. And I feel like if it was an animal, if they were running, they probably, I'd, one, I'd hear them because there's, it's so dense that you really can't run without something hearing you. And I had my, all the windows were open because when we were coming with like more than just the two of us, we always kept our windows open so we could hear things. We would hear it, and I feel like if an animal's running away, they probably wouldn't keep their eyes closed. <laughs> like, yeah. It just doesn't make any sense. And I was the only one that saw it that time. And it 
it scared me because that was I think that was one of the first experiences I had other than the pain that I was feeling. Mm. <laughs> Fun stuff. Fun stuff, yeah. <laughs> Show them the sides with your daylights. This is how we usually drive out here so that we can see the, the tree lines. Oh, wow. Because that's usually where I see things. But he still has a little bit of light out here so that if something goes by the front of the car, he can still see it. That actually looks so crazy creepy on my camera. Mm -hmm. You really, oh my God, yeah, I can. The other thing too, I didn't mention you guys, is the uh, mad trucker. Like, like I said, we've experienced pretty much everything except for Bigfoot so far. Yep, last night was the first time for Skinwalker, I think. Yeah, and then you just said that we saw the mad trucker. That was terrifying because he was like literally bumper to bumper with us. What's the mad trucker? Oh, you, I think you know more about it than I do. I've done a lot of research since. So we, before, so it's down this road here. Oop, here's the puddles. Um, it's farther down, but before we even knew about the whole mad trucker situation, um, we saw a truck parked on the side of the road and nobody was in it. The lights were on, it was running, and it was parked next to a, a gate that led to a path. And um, this is obviously an area where people come out, dead bodies and found out here and stuff. So could have been that, but we think it was the mad trucker because um, as soon as we drove by it, so we went by it one time and then we had to turn around. We came back this way going the opposite way. And um, it was still parked there, but as soon as we drove by it the second time, it started following us and it was tailgating us. And the only thing we didn't hear was the horn. Supposedly it goes behind you, drives behind you very quick and it blares the horn, it just beeps it a few times, and then it just disappears. But everything happened to us but the horn, but it disappeared out of nowhere. We looked back and it's just gone. Yeah, and either way, let's say that it wasn't a ghost car, you still got fucking chased out of here. <laughs> Wait, what is that? That's a tarp. It we saw that us. last night. It scared <laughs> us so bad last it's... night, we thought it was like a trash bag. Yeah, that's what it looks like. I'm used to leaking Park where they find bodies and animals wrapped in bags all the time. <laughs> Still though, like I said, that's fucking creepy. Mm -hmm. Either way you cut it. <laughs> yep. Not oh, yeah. to alarm you guys, but I'm starting to get that panicky feeling. And that's how you, this usually starts, is I start to feel like I'm gonna have a panic attack. Yeah, what, what, what area is this? Is just, this just- This is like, I feel like, what, what would you call this? Like the back of like, yeah, like the back roads of the forest? The back, yeah, that's- Like, that's a, the first time we came out here, we were like, okay, it's creepy, and then we couldn't find it because we, it was like so far back that like, we lost service, like, it's, it's like the terrorizing part of the forest, I feel like. This is the area here where I think we saw the Thunderbird. Yeah. It was more condensed, because a little while ago, the road was wide open more, but. Yeah, wasn't it like right here? I think so. And you like slammed on your brakes. Oh yeah, okay, it was very close to our car. Yeah, I'm getting that eerie feeling back here as well. Yeah, I feel like I always have like pressure on my chest. And then the further we go in is when like my head kind of starts to get foggy and I start to feel like I'm like sometimes I feel like I'm going to pass out. Sometimes I feel like it's just like a really bad migraine. And as soon as we leave, I'm fine. God, this is fucking spooky. I turn my light off so you can, people can see what it looks like. <laughs> it's terrifying. Oh my god, <laughs> dude. I've gotten out of the car twice. And as soon as I got to the tree line, I just felt like crap. So do you guys think it's dangerous to come out here at night? Oh, for sure. I mean, there's definitely cults and stuff out here too. Yeah. Um, We've a never lot of, seen anything from cults. Yeah, after the 70s and 80s, I feel like uh, there was a lot of investigations around cults and like the rumors of cult killings because of how many bodies they were finding out here. And they say to this day, like, if you go hiking far enough, because it's it's massive, you'll probably find a body out here. Mm. And so I feel like a lot of cults were getting caught, and they started. Some of them like moved over to the Hockamock Swamp, which I think 
human wise is by far more dangerous um but here i feel like it's the energy and the activity that goes on out here that makes this way scarier because it's it's things that you can't see well thank you for that cheery <laughs> <Sorry. sad> warning <laughs> Like me. <laughs> yeah, we had never been to the Hockamock Swamp. I didn't even make it yeah. more than a mile. We were very, no, we were very close though. We were. Yeah. Because we, we were walking for a long time. Yeah. We almost made it. It was and it was daylight, and as soon as you get over that overhang, pitch black. Yeah, we were there like 5 p.m. during the summer. We it could was not see totally dark. more wow. than like five feet in front of us. We had headlight headlights on. We had flashlights. Um, we literally had every light you could think of and we could not see more than a few feet in front of our faces. That's crazy. Yeah. In the middle of the day too. Yeah. yeah that's, that's like as soon as you get into like the actual entrance of the trail to the swamp, pitch black. The only feeling I can describe about that place is just watch your back, <laughs> honestly. <laughs> well, is there a place that we're going to drive and get out? Yeah. Oh, yeah. If you want to get out, get out. So this dirt part of the forest is where I've seen the shadow figures. Um, I've heard people talking right next to the car and there's nobody there. I've heard people walk up to the car and there's nobody there. Um, I, this is a little bit further down when you're going towards the, like the, um, what is it, a power plant that they just Something built? Like that is where I oh God. have gotten like the worst of the worst headaches. This is the power plant. This is what I think we should get out first. Yes, most definitely. This is where I saw the spirit with the lantern. Perfect. The power plant's freaky, dude. Yeah. He wouldn't come deep in with us and we were like, we felt like something was in here. We felt like we were being watched and then there used to be, is it still out here, James? That tunnel thing? No. When they were doing construction, there was like this massive like cylinder thing and me and her walked by it and we saw something like crouched in it and we kind of went like this, like did we just see that and it was gone and he got back in the car. <laughs> he was like, I am so good with whatever you guys saw and so we kind of looked around for it and it was, there, were, there used to be lights over here I feel like from when they were doing construction, so it wasn't this dark oh, yeah. either. And we couldn't find anything anywhere. Like, it just, like, it vanished. What it did gone. it look like? It, it wasn't all black. It had, like, a, a little bit of color to it. I want to say, like, maybe, like, gray. It was, like, black and gray. And it was skinny, and it had long arms and legs, and it was bald and it was just crouched on the ground what? Where? inside the cylinder right that they were here? yeah it was like right around here this wasn't as grown out either i feel like it wasn't and it was just like this big cylinder that they were using for construction yeah this is i can see why this could be very very creepy i'm also um on this side where the cylinder was actually, I've seen um, like eyes kind of go from here up. It's in this area over here. Um, and then a little bit further down is where I saw the black shadow literally go like eight feet and peek out from behind the tree. So hmm. this place, and I always feel like I'm being watched here. Like something is just moving all around you like super fast and you're being just watched from all angles um, ever since we saw whatever that was and I feel like it definitely saw us I don't like it out here I don't get out of the car here anymore except for right now except for right now <laughs> yeah no this is your last time <laughs> yeah, most likely yeah I haven't when was that like a year ago maybe more yeah but, yeah maybe one and all the times we've been down here since, I have not gotten out of the car here. Mm -hmm. I won't do it. So real quickly, 
can you both introduce yourselves and kind of say where we are? Because we haven't done that yet. Yeah, absolutely. My name is Tori. Um, I live literally right in the middle of the Bridgewater Triangle. We're in the Freetown State Forest right now. And I have some kind of ability that I don't know how to control yet. I'm James, I'm Tori's friend. I've been uh, <laughs> coming here for a little while now, about 10 years off and on. Um, but Tori's definitely the one that's seen the most, I'd say. Yeah. And you guys both have had some pretty fun, crazy experiences. Yeah. Yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> He's seen the more physical things and I feel like mine is things that nobody else can see, which is really terrifying. <laughs> so when we pulled over here, you talked about a lantern ghost. Yeah, so can it's you actually... you explain like where we are first? Yeah, so we are, this is a new power plant that they just built recently before it was just a construction zone. And so we would stop here all the time and like, cause I always felt like there was something weird about this place. And me and my friends would get out and he would have, was you'd say like right here is how, how far you would go maybe Probably. a little bit farther back Same. he would stay close to the car me and my friend taylor saw something in the cylinder like i said and i just never felt right here and then more recently we were in the car and this is i won't get out of the car anymore usually and straight down the middle of the path i saw like this glowing lantern like i could see like it flickering and it looked like I could see the outline of somebody walking. And he kept walking and I could tell from the way he was moving that it was walking towards us. And so we sat there for a while because we didn't know if it was a person um, or if it was something else. And the more we sat there, the more we realized he wasn't moving. Like he was walking, but he was like walking in place. Mm. It was weird. And then he just, he was gone. Yeah. We saw something on the tree lines over there that caught our attention. I pulled up my phone to video camera it, and as soon as I went to go look up with my phone, gone. I looked back down it always goes. <laughs> to the spirit or whatever it was with the lantern and he was gone. And we were out of here. <laughs> yeah, that, that's pretty spooky down there. Yeah, it is. <laughs> I think the farthest I've been is like maybe a little bit past these columns. Well, something I think is interesting that we should point out is the fact that there's a power plant in the middle of a haunted forest mm -hmm. and ghosts and paranormal it's is, out yeah, it's powered by EMF and that's like the fucking mega battery, bro, <laughs> that's powering <laughs> all of this forest. I mean, like, what the hell, man? And we're constantly switching back and forth between his charger because when we're out here, our phones die fast. Oh, I've come here with a friend. So oh. he actually brought an extra charger in case you guys need it because huh. we fight over his charger. <laughs> well, that's kind of you. Thank you. We were on the phone last night talking about all of the, the spots that I've been most affected and he's been most affected. And as soon as we got off the phone, my phone went from like 92% to 60% in like 30 seconds. And this is a brand new phone. I literally just got it like two months ago. And then after I got off the phone with you guys, I called him and my phone started glitching like crazy. We had to hang up and try to recall each other because it wouldn't stop. It knew we were coming. I feel you. <laughs> Last night we were doing the SS method and it told us to come alone. Really? Yeah. Like it didn't want us to come? It was not happy. And it was the male energy that I feel. It kept saying, come alone. And then didn't at one point say, don't you listen? Yeah. That was uh... like... It's saying like, come alone with all the weird shit that's happened with like abductions and stuff like that out here. Yeah. Right. <laughs> There's something that's always trying to get me to go into the trees by myself and I won't do it. It's like, it's so strange. It feels like you're just, like you said, being watched. Mm -hmm. Like, that fucking tree line is just like, I don't know. While you were talking, I just kind of felt like something over there, deeper in the forest, kind of walk up. Yeah. Not to sound <laughs> like crazy, like I'm just, I've only been here like five minutes, but. Yeah. There are times where I feel like I can feel it from every angle. Like, it's just either moving really fast around me or there's multiple out here. This is actually, this is the area where I heard somebody walk up to the car and there was nobody there. Yeah. I was, was in the back place. seat where you're sitting and I had my window down and I thought I saw something over here. And then I heard 
walk up to my window. Nothing the there. Estes method, no, we weren't doing that stuff. Estes method. We were with your friend. Oh. And um, he was in the front seat. And then I told you guys to be quiet because <laughs> you were trying to figure out where we wanted to go next. And that's when I heard the voices like, like diagonal behind me. <laughs> <laughs> this area is, I'm so sorry. Okay. This area, so creepy. Yeah. My brother, he's like traumatized from. Like, <laughs> even, it's so weird around here. I had this same feeling the last time where you can just hear like little like, like in the peripheral. Yeah audio in your brain you know <laughs> i don't mm -hmm. know if you're like inventing that or it's the wind or there are actually are little puck wudgies walking around right down. you saw a puck wudgie oh Run, me and my right friend we both looked car. at each other that's kind of how i know that was what we saw because uh we were just driving and he, my friend was sitting on the passenger seat tori was sitting in the back and um yeah, we were just driving and out of nowhere it just ran right in front of the car but it was so small it didn't look like an animal it was uh it, it was weird that's Fuck crazy that's nice. man <laughs> Yep. Dude, I would love to see a Puck YG. <laughs> I'll let you see him when I'm not around, man. <laughs> <laughs> <Ooh. laughs> Alright. I'm ready. While he's home alone. He said, scratches on the window screen. Noises cl coming from my closet. Spirits mim mimicking our voices and our lost loved ones' voices. Seeing dark figures around the house. And then he texted me more later, and he said, knocking on the doors when nobody's home, like the bedroom doors, um, and hangers that are untouched, no windows open, swinging uncontrollably. God. That's all stuff that's been happening in your house? Yeah, to, just to my brother alone. That is absolutely wild. Yeah. Sorry about that. Why? Yeah. Oh, no, you're fine. Oh, that's fine. Um, at one point... He started coming with us because he didn't want to stay home alone and he just ended up more scared. I bet. Um, because my mom works, um, she's a bartender and um, so she works super late. This is usually when we come out here. He was like, sissy, I'm not staying home alone. He's like, the last time I stayed home alone, something happened and I'm not doing it. He was like, something creeped up to my door and I could hear it breathing and the, the floor started like, cause we don't have real hardwood floors. We have like the fake hardwood floors. And so when you walk, you can see like the floor kind of move. And so he was like, I peeked my head out the door and I saw the floor moving like somebody was walking and I'm never doing it again. <laughs> wow. Mm -hmm. He has a sign on his door and it's, it's wire with like a, um, he has like a tiny command strip and he forces it in there, so you have to force it back out. He shut his door and he doesn't slam it because my mom, he used to slam things all the time and my mom finally got him to like, close doors like a normal person. <laughs> <laughs> and um, he was just sitting in his room and he heard the sign like scraping his door and then he heard something hit the floor. So he opened his door and he realized the sign was gone. And you know how when things like fall, they're not like, they're kind of like scattered. Like it looks mm -hmm. like things are scattered. It was perfectly placed, aligned with his door, doorway, waiting for him to pick it up and fix it. So creepy. Mm. Mm-hmm. You have to come investigate your house, honestly. <laughs> it's really bad, like. So that's well, very tough. Mm -hmm. Yeah, tonight I think we're gonna try at least talk to whatever's here to see if we can get some answers on what might be talking to you. When we do the SS method and it's his turn, it only wants to talk to me, especially when we did it at my house. Because we did it at my house when it started to get really bad because I wanted to figure out what it was. And I figured the SS method was the lesser of two evils. Like, no Ouija board, no, like, none of that stuff. And so we started it and I didn't really, t I don't think I really told you everything that was going on in my house. Like, I didn't tell you about the shadows in the bathroom as much i didn't tell you like i told you about like the scratches on the window i told you about my mom's door opening and slamming closed when she wasn't home i told your mom my bag that was like thrown across across the kitchen i thought somebody broke in oh yeah um 
So he was doing the assist method and I was asking questions and at one point it was saying, it's her, we wanna to talk to her. And then you were asking some questions about me being a medium, if I remember back from the files, cause we have them, like we recorded all of them. And it was saying that I was the one that they needed, they needed help. And then a few days after that, my brother heard knocking on his closet door. It was like frantic, like something was trying to get out. And so he called me into his bedroom and he was like, wait, just listen. And so I moved closer and I literally just like emotionally broke. I started crying. My, it freaked my brother out. He started recording me because he didn't know what was going on. And the more I cried, the more the knocking happened. And so I'm like, why am I always feeling sad? around certain areas like it just doesn't make any sense mm -hmm. and then i found out about the aruda case and what she went through and i don't know i just feel like it makes sense and when she's around i i don't feel negative i just feel sad and i feel scared well, i know the feeling we've had a couple times at locations where like you just have this wave of sadness come over you then it's like not explainable because even for me I'm not an emotional person at all but I've learned that I've, I'm kind of empathetic to spirits and so like I have waves of sadness come over me where I start crying and I'm like Colin never sees me cry like ever no. yeah. and so like when he sees me he's like oh shit like this is this is real. Yeah, that was, last night was the first time you've ever seen me cry. Yep. I don't like crying in front of people either. I feel uncomfortable when yeah. I do it. Like, I don't like people seeing my emotions. Mm -hmm. I feel like it, like, makes me look too vulnerable. Especially on camera, too. <laughs> <laughs> no, seriously, like, we, he was doing a live stream last night so he could, because it was just easier for him to save them to his TikTok once he was finished so yeah. he could look through it. And... I literally just started crying while he was on live <laughs> twice. <laughs> like there were people hearing me cry. Yeah. Hey, don't, look like, don't look at me. Don't look at me. And at one point he tried to like show them that I was crying and I was like, get the camera out of my face. <laughs> you always do that <laughs> True. Well, are we gonna get out here? Yeah, yes. absolutely. Okay. So, uh, this is about like if I do get out of the car on one of the like the Schrader roads, I won't go past like here. Oh shit, well this is f***ing creepy. Uh-huh. <laughs> I... Did you hear that? I, I heard something on the other side. Just like... Uh... Yeah. What the f***? That came from like right here. Okay, anyways. <laughs> why, why did we stop here? This is where I've... This is another location where I've seen that shadow that kind of reaches about eight feet. He peeks out from the trees. Um, I've told him to stop here so many times, like he'll be doing the speed limit and I'll be like, stop the car. And I roll down my window and I feel like I, I see something, but we didn't have flashlights, flashlights like this before. So I couldn't really see too far down. And I'm like, I swear I just saw something. Like, I don't know what it was. And then, down there. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I have to go around this more. Especially when you look down that road, that's the left side. That's the one that's incredibly hard to drive down. You feel like, even though you can't see something, you feel like something's in the road just watching you. It's a weird feeling. I mean, it looks, once again, I hate to just keep saying it looks creepy, but it looks creepy. <laughs> that's just the only way to describe this yeah. place, honestly. Like, Right down this way here, just a little past that tree is right where I saw the puck with you. Really? Mm -hmm. Yep. That's another reason why I don't get out here. <laughs> I only remember because of that tree. Yep. That's a remarkable tree. <laughs> Hard to miss that one. Yeah, around this area is where I see something peeking out and like kind of playing peekaboo, like seeing if I follow it. So, what do you guys think is like haunting this area? Do you have any idea like what it feels like? It's a lot, a lot of different things, I think. There have been so many people killed here. Um, there have been so many satanic rituals here. People literally find pentagrams like carved out in the dirt, just still there, even if it's like super old, just still there, not washed away from the rain, 
and sometimes they find, like they found a bunch of cows out here once. Like there was a sacrifice with cows. How did they really? get cows into the middle of the forest? <laughs> like I don't, you just can't explain half of this stuff. It's, it's scary. And it's, if you run into the wrong people, it gets very dangerous because they don't care. They will do anything that they can to stop you and to get you away. Why do you guys think that this area is kind of like a magnet for satanic stuff or like evil cult activity? Uh, if you see how dense this forest is, it's really hard to get caught. It's the most likely. <laughs> yeah, and I feel like Oh, they got away with it. Let's go do it. Oh, they got away with it. Let's go do it. Oh, the cults are getting away with this? I can dump a body here. Like, I just feel like people kind of over time started to realize, like, how easy it was to do things out here and get away with it. Yeah, I mean, even you look just right over here into the bushes. You dump a body out there. Mm -hmm. No one's going to go digging through those branches and bushes to look for stuff. I mean, even you smell like something rotting, you're like, oh, it's an animal. It's got a funky smell out here. Yeah. This spot specifically, it's not really kind of still far away from all the houses and stuff, too. So. Yeah. If you think it smells funky out here, you're going to hate the swamp. <laughs> oh, it's bad, especially near the dog track. It smells so bad. But we've heard, like, like, like human but non-human, like, noises out here, like, so, like trying to mimic people. We've heard like really loud footsteps. Like they do not care, like if we hear them or not. They're like, we're here. If you don't like it, you can get out. And there's like, I believe I, when I was doing research, there was like talks of Wendigos and, um, of course, the the Skinwalkers, Bigfoot, and I think that like, that just goes way back. Yeah. And I mean, when you think about it, think of how many bodies are probably out here. Oh, yeah. You know, not even just murder victims, but like indigenous graves mm -hmm. and fucking missing people, like just like buried mob hits, shit like that. People you know, that were just make me become more active. All these neighborhoods being built. Yeah, right. Definitely stir some stuff up. That does not help right over there. <laughs> now the giant. Paranormal battery that's right <laughs> down the street. Yeah. Not at all. <laughs> Not at all. I think you should mark this as a pin for sure. We should come back here because this is f eerie. It's so quiet. There's just too. something, and if you even look at the roundabout, there's something about like the way that it's centered, and you just you always experience something from both sides. It's kind of like really creepy, and it's creepy, but you know you're gonna catch something on this side. Like you feel like. That is way heavier. I don't know what happened down there, but it is heavier tenfold. Just that you're feeling wise, you mean? Yeah, every time I look down there, I feel like somebody's watching me, even if I can't see it. And I just, it, I get drawn to like the middle of the road further up. We, the last time we tried to drive out there, there were like giant mattresses in the middle of the road. Um, giant. Really? Like, mm -hmm caving in potholes and like bigger than the ones that we drove past um there have been like huge like we've seen duffel bags trash bags like that place is that that side of the forest is so run down looking that well you almost didn't make it out nope. like the car almost got yeah, stuck okay. a few times and we haven't been back over that side since it just there's just something about that side i do not like compared to this one. Oh shit You don't see that too often out here either. Should, we, should I turn my light on? I might leave it on so I know it's here. Yeah. Mm -mm. Huh? I was about to say, he's about to go down the creepy way. <laughs> That's another thing. I don't think, I've never at least seen any cars no. drive down that way. I've never seen any cars turn down there. Out of like but the two or three years that we've been coming here together, I've never seen a car voluntarily turn down there. I've seen people like walk or ride their bike, but I've never seen a car go down there. It makes me also something, or I don't know it why. <laughs> <laughs> it makes something, it also makes me think about being out here is 
the amount of people that have probably come out, walked deep into the woods and killed themselves mm -hmm. and they were never found. Because yep. like Leakin Park in Baltimore, there's like hundreds of people that have done that. And like my friend found a human skull from a guy who just sh took a shotgun and killed himself. It's like, wow. how many people are, this is like massive, oh, yeah. you know? It's like a few thousand acres, I think, and just he, the forest alone. Think about even like the 1800s, the 1700s people coming out here and doing that or murdering people and burying mm -hmm. people out here. Especially when there was no <laughs> DNA evidence and they didn't really do crime scene investigations. And you know, if somebody went missing, they were probably just ruled dead. Yeah, and my, I've always felt like there's some sort of like demonic evil out here. This is the one forest that's creepy like that. Oh, for sure. Oh yeah, there definitely is. What, what would make you think that? I mean, the way you panicked last night, I've never seen you like that before in my life. Mm -hmm. Same. I've never panicked like that. He's gotten scared, but he he looked like he saw something, and I, I, he didn't. He felt something, but something scared him so bad that he literally risked ruining his car. <laughs> yeah. Can you explain that story real quick? Uh, it was just, she, you felt kind of weird and then i was so sick yeah and then it just kind of hit me and i didn't know at first that you felt like that we didn't know till after nope. you yeah, said it. i just shut down i wasn't talking to you i was like i was sad but i was also like i'm over it that's when i started breathing heavily and something just like affected you that's what you're talking about like just yeah, I got, fear yeah. and panic yep it's just yeah just i've never felt like that couldn't breathe, just wanted, to, just wanted to get out of there. And he's usually the stoic one. Mm. So that scared me, because I was like, if he's freaking out, there's something wrong. And at that point, my emotions were just so drained that I was like, I really don't care what happens. Like, if we stay, we stay. If we don't, we don't. If we get stuck, whatever. <laughs> like, I just didn't care anymore. Mm. And then I started crying again. So train tracks just felt totally fine. Yeah, I had like pain going down my neck. I had a huge migraine, I felt like I was like, I was super nauseous. Um, I kind of just wanted to curl up and just not move for like ever. I just, I didn't want any of it anymore. And yet you're out here again tonight with us. Oh. <laughs> it's never, it's it's never stopped me it before. Somehow we suckered you guys into coming out here with us. So as, as, until I get answers as to what's going on with me, I think I will forever keep coming out here trying to figure it out. Well, you guys... You want to talk, I guess now, we could talk about the girl who was abducted at the next spot? Oh yeah, for sure. Yeah. It's a little bit this way, right? Yep. Okay. And again, I couldn't, I couldn't find it online, so I don't know how deep they found her. But this is the area where I start to feel like this. And I just feel like I'm sad, but I'm like, I feel like I was just terrorized. Yeah, so her name was Mary Lou Arruda. She was from Rainham, and it's actually not far from where my house is now. She was abducted two days after her 15th birthday, um, and it was by a man named, his last name is Cater, and he had, he had done this before, and he hardly got any time for it. And he had um, taken her here to the forest, and I don't have any, like, solid evidence, but every time I'm in this area, I feel like this is the saddest part. So I feel like it might be her. And he literally tied her to a tree from the neck down and left her there to die. Um, he tied her neck so tight that she had ended up falling asleep and it strangled her when she fell asleep because she didn't have anything supporting her head. And um, they didn't find her body for two months. And at that point they could only identify her by her clothing. Um, and they, he, was found 
and arrested because he smokes the same cigarettes and he his car was very specific it had lightning strikes down the sides and so they knew it was him one of his, one or two or maybe all of the tires it said that they were bald and it had matched the tire track of the at the abduction site and with his history they knew it was him he was tried four times for this crime the first time the massachusetts supreme court overturned his guilty verdict then there was a mistrial and then i believe it was either another mistrial or it was overturned again and then the fourth time he was finally found guilty and it was so dangerous for him to stay in Massachusetts that they sent him across the country to California where he ended up getting cancer and he died in 2016. And what 2016 is not very far from when we started coming to the forest. Mm -hmm. yep. And you've seen her. I have. Um, our past pa The past tenants that lived in our apartment have seen her. Um, the picture on her memorial, she has dark hair a white dress and she's very young. When we moved into where we live now, and this was, so at this point we had already been coming to the forest. Mm -hmm. I had found her memorial picture and I always felt like I felt a female presence and then there's the male negative energy. And she matched the description to a T. And when I found her plot, like her grave, it's literally I could walk to it from my house and it wouldn't, take me more than five minutes like it's so close and I've been to that cemetery a million times for funerals so she was always right there I was telling my mom because the more she experiences at our house the more she's starting to believe and she's still kind of a skeptic she her jaw hit the floor and she was silent for a minute and she was like that's who you've been seeing she was like Tori I grew up with that family she was like I was best friends with her sisters like, I knew them, like, for a large chunk of my life. And then my grandmother said that she remembered that family. And then I realized that she had gone missing on my uncle's birthday. My aunt, she grew up in Rainham and they owned, like, a dumpster company. So they were, like, they were pretty well known in the Rainham area. And she was like, oh, yeah, we knew them. Like, every, everybody knew that family. We were all friends growing up. Like, we didn't ever meet Mary Lou because she died when we were really young but we were friends with her siblings. Like we all grew up together. They were super close to us and I <laughs> I couldn't I couldn't believe it that I had the forest, my family, the same cemetery that I've we've always had for our family members. Like she's always been right there in one way or another. Did you guys hear that? Is that right? Really? You're good. Um, but in one way or another, I always had a connection with her. And when we first started doing the Estes methods, did you hear that? Oh, that was a shadow. <laughs> oh, I saw that too. <laughs> I was like, that's the guy. That's the shadow. <laughs> okay, but first of all, it's creepy. I thought I heard it like a screech back I there did or too. something. Yeah, um, it kind of sounded like we heard last night, honestly. Oh, great. But so you have seen a vision of her. Mm -hmm. What? What? What was that? I couldn't see her face. I could see a girl, and she was sad. 
like she was crying and this was around the time we did the SS method at my house where somebody was what the fuck was that that wasn't loud dude it was like Jesus. <laughs> oh, you're fine. <laughs> this is up. no, but this is what I'm talking about. Anytime I talk about her, or I do the SS method, and I try to specifically contact her. There is a negative energy that either talks over her or tries to stop me. That's when I start to get panicky, and my head starts to hurt, and it just. But anyway, um, she was like really sad, and whether it was my vision or it was the SS method, it was a girl that was always asking for help. Like she was stuck. And she was always asking for me. And um, it's just like, it like, it just completely drains me every time because it's like it's so distraught. And then we were doing the SS method last night and I kept hearing a young girl calling out for her mother. Like she was crying for her. And it was, I think it had to have been the most heartbreaking thing that I've ever experienced. She's she's really sad and she's stuck and I can feel it which would I mean for me would explain the crying would explain the symptoms would explain why I literally just want to half the time curl up in a ball and just stay away from the world like I always just feel so depressed when I come into contact with her but then on the other hand when he tries to kind of come in and take over is when I can't breathe um, kind of like what just happened to me um, and I just get really panicky and I feel like I'm being watched yeah that's the funny thing about this forest it always feels like you're being watched mm -hmm. I feel yep. like whether it's by humans or ghosts I don't know what it is yeah and at one point we were, one of the first SS methods we did she was trying to warn us about somebody kept saying they're coming, he's coming, run, like all these things. My mom walked by us and we were in the pitch black. She walked by super quiet because she knew what we were doing. And all of a sudden we got. <laughs> and all of a sudden we got on the, the SS method and we can show you obviously, but we have it on our phones. Why is she walking? She should be running. We showed my brother the next day and it kept saying something about a closet. And it was like, I'm stuck. Help me, help me, like I can't get out. And then it kept saying the closet. And you had asked specifically if it was that closet at one point. And it said, it basically said, yes, the closet. And then not long after that is when I broke down in front of my brother's closet. And I had been in his room a million times. That's never happened to me before. Wow. So. So what do you guys think is like the most evil feeling part of the forest? Like if we were tonight to go try to talk to the like, the demon, the evil energy, what part that you guys have been to would that be? I mean the most activity I guess that we've experienced would be near that power plant down there. Interesting. Yeah. Um, and then, I mean... Take a trail, <clears throat> honestly. Like <laughs> you just always feel like you're being watched by something that doesn't want you here. Like they did not want us to bring you here. Like they made it incredibly clear last night, you need to come alone. Yeah, I can guarantee you that you're being watched at all times. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Yeah, and it's weird because people that live here will literally no flashlight, nothing reflective on will walk their dogs in the pitch black in the middle of the road. No, that was like, scared of shit. Like, <laughs> this <laughs> place is just strange. Like, mm -hmm. everything about it, like, is just, like, the opposite of the outer <laughs> part of Massachusetts from this forest. Like, this place is just, you can't explain it. There's no words. Well, is there another place you guys want to go? Has anything ever happened to you down there? That's what? You had pretty much from here down right before the water is where I like, like I just start crying in your car. Alright, can we go down there? Yeah. Go down the water. See, I love it. <laughs> you can't whistle, whistle loud for shit. <laughs> okay, let's hear you do it then. <clears throat> oh my god. <laughs>
fucking kidding me. <laughs> I used to be like, fucking asshole. Was super loud. <laughs> that was comedy gold, honestly. <laughs> All right, so you said we're gonna wrap. We're gonna wrap the interview right now. Yes. And you guys said this is your guys' safe space. Yes, this bridge is the only place that we can really come to decompress when we're down here. There's, we've never had any really bad experiences here. Um, and everything that we kind of feel like the, like the suppression and like the emotions and everything, it kind of like immediately, like as soon as you get on this bridge, it's gone. Like you just kind of feel like I can breathe again. It's just a nice place. Um, we've never been scared out here. You get out here all the time. Mm -hmm. We've spent hours here before, like just on this bridge because we've experienced so much in there that we don't really want to drive in here anymore. It feels <laughs> pleasant out here, actually. Yeah, mm -hmm. it yep. does. Like, just relaxing. Yep. And the people that live here will actually, people have stopped. I'm like, what are you guys doing? Are you okay? Like, you go through the forest? <laughs> like, remember that guy and his wife that stopped and he asked if we were okay that day we were out here for hours? Yes, yes. That was... Cause I feel, I just feel like this is like a place where people can go to like get away from that chaos and the like the terrorizing. That is I think it's freaky how the one light that's glitching is the one closest to the forest. Yep. And yep. last night was the first time we've seen it do that. We've never seen these lights glitch like that before. That's freaky. Yep. The one leading right into the woods. Seriously. So, you guys both think this forest is like extremely haunted. Oh yeah. 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 Oh yeah. Well, I've experienced a lot. So. There's from what I've seen, what I've heard, what I felt. There's no other explanation. I was fine until I started coming out here. I mean, apart from like when I was younger and. Like the other things happened to me, it really stopped. There was a period of time, and I don't know if it was because I was older and I really wasn't open to it, that it stopped. And then we moved here <laughs> back to our hometown and it started again. Yeah. <laughs> so. For me, it kind of confirms every, every time I feel something, somebody else always experiences the same thing. So it's kind of confirms it for me that not crazy and it's something's happening yeah you guys think you have to be <clears throat> careful when you're out here mm -hmm. you yep. can be dangerous oh, yeah. in what way there's things trying to get you to come into the forest not on a trail where you could easily get lost um i've had things kind of you know kind of tease me a little bit like i know you saw me come see me again like it kind of just like slowly moves away and then it realizes I'm not following it and it disappears. Like it, it knows that it caught my attention. It wants to keep it. And then it gets mad when it doesn't. It's just, there's a lot of, I don't know if it's trickster spirits. I don't know if it's like demonic energy from this, the, the rituals that were done here. I don't know if it's angry spirits. Um, maybe they met like a tragic end. I don't know what it is but whatever it is likes to mess with people and it likes to terrorize people. So. Yeah, yeah. there's some hauntings that are happy. This doesn't seem like a happy no. haunting here. No, I, this is the only place where I don't feel constant dread and like something bad might happen. Yeah, the one well-lit place. Yeah. In a Just sea of darkness. And it's like open <laughs> yeah. and it's water. So it's like, you can't really get lost out here. <laughs> That's what you think. <laughs> if you get lost on this bridge, you got a problem. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, I know I have my troubles with directions, but I think I'm good right here. <laughs> well, I think we, before we come out here to the forest this evening, are going to go to her house and see if we can make contact with the spirit that may or may not have come from this forest or may have been attached to you for a bit longer you know <laughs> you don't really know but we just got the approval from her mom so we are gonna head over there now and I'm excited we haven't done like a home investigation in a really long time 
it'll be interesting too to see what we get there and see if it connects to what we get out here mm -hmm. later tonight you yep, know yep. Definitely. well and my brother should be home so he should be able to tell you all about perfect what he's gone through all right well let's do it man Okay, we just got back to our car after filming at the Freetown State Forest and this door was literally wide fucking open, bro. Now, what the fuck actually? I know. I'm like, what the fuck? This, there's literally headphones sitting right here. All of our bags. All of our bags and nothing was taken. Hold up. Drones in there, both camera bags. That's kind of nuts. So after the tour from Tori, we had an epiphany. Why don't we go to Tori's apartment and investigate there and try to see if we can talk to this entity? Now, it was really kind of her to allow us to come in, but I mean, we were trying to help get some sort of an answer for her. And I think that through this investigating, I mean, it was very creepy for sure, but we got some form of an answer. And it wasn't the end of the haunting. I mean, there's more to talk about at the end of the video, but. Yeah, just check this out. This is truly, truly some mind-blowing stuff. So we are currently in my apartment. I live here with my mom and my little brother. I think the first time that I experienced something, it was the bathroom. Again, that's like one of the hot spots in the house. I was in the kitchen and I felt like I was being watched. And so I turned around and I saw the door just kind of close like it just closed and that door is actually not like soup like it's not like really smooth when you close it it you kind of have to push it and sometimes if you don't push it hard enough it opens again but it like completely closed and so ever since then my brother's experienced the same thing he's felt like he's seen a shadow man i've definitely seen like a like a black figure peek out from behind the door. It's kind of the same vibe as the forest. It's almost as if he's, or it is teasing us. It wants us to like pay attention to him. And when we don't, that's when more things happen. My brother started to experience things when he was home alone because me and my mom, we work long hours and he came into the bathroom and he took a picture and he sent it to me and I had looked at it and it was scratch marks on the inside of the, the the bathroom screen now we live on the second floor there's no way for somebody to get up to our bathroom window and scratch it especially on the inside and i think that was what really kind of cemented to me that there's either something here something that followed me whatever it was we were not alone um basically what happened was is i had to start making sure that I was home with him or make sure that he was okay because it was starting to affect him. It's, he started hearing things creeping up to his door, like he was hearing heavy breathing, like something was like stalking around his door frame in his bedroom. Um, his sign was coming off his bedroom door and um, he was hearing things in his closet. Uh, his friends actually, when they were sleeping over, they started sleeping out in the living room because they were like they didn't feel comfortable in his room or anywhere near the bathroom either. One day I was home alone. My brother was next door at his friend's house or like, a, a, like maybe two houses down or this house right here. And I was sitting on the couch and I have a tote bag that I bring to work with me and I put it in the middle of our dining room table and it was heavy. I had a lot of stuff in it from work and I just hear this huge crash. So I text my brother and I'm like, did you just come home? I think if you, if you didn't, somebody definitely broke in because it was loud. And I just kind of froze on the couch for a minute 
and when I didn't hear anything, I got up and I kind of peeked and he started banging at the door because he, like, he ran back here as fast as he could. And when I did peek around the corner before I let him in the house, my bag was just all over the floor. All my stuff, <laughs> everything, it was like it smacked the wall and it just scattered everywhere. And that was terrifying because if that's happening, what else is gonna happen? Especially because we literally have a teenager in the house who is absolutely terrified at times to be here alone. Um, It's not stopping. If it was like because the door got shut, it would have stopped by now. Bro, what the fuck? We're hearing noises from my closet and she's starting to cry. Like, I feel really sad right now. <laughs> like, I don't feel scared, I feel sad. Like, I'm, like, stuck. This is what, that's never happened to me before. <sighs> like, I feel, like, sad. And my heart is starting to race. We were just standing in like, there. Like, as soon as I looked we, at the closet. We just came to my room so I could grab some money. And we just started hearing cracking noises from the closet. And as soon as she started crying, we just... Why did I just open my door, right? And my Joey sign is off the door. The only way you're getting this off the command strip is if you lift it. And my door was shut and nobody else is here. He turns on every light in the house. Like I said, he won't turn his back to the bathroom because there is definitely something that like creeps around in there. My mom has heard knocking and like I said before, she's a skeptic. So the fact that she's experiencing things now it's kind of cementing everything for us. Like, it's not just us, now it's three people. Well, now his friends are experiencing things in the house. Past tenants are contacting us and asking us if we've seen a girl on my brother's bed that cries and is sad. And after that, I'm breaking down in front of his closet out of nowhere when I've been in there a million times. My brother started sleepwalking when we moved in here. He was getting violent, like, it's just getting to a point where I don't know why it's here, if it followed me, if it's gonna hurt one of us. Um, I just, I want it to go back to normal, basically. Like, I don't want my brother to be scared every time he walks in the door after school. I don't want my mom to text me and be like, when are you gonna be home? Like, I, it's creepy out there. Like, are you home yet? Like. She's never been afraid in her life. Like, my mom is one of the most fearless people I know. And the fact that she's afraid of this place, it just, that's, like, bottom line for me. Like, I just need to figure out what, what is going on. So you think this thing possibly came from the forest? Yeah, and I only say that because it's the same behavior. It's the same responses. It's the same kind of not trickster but like kind of like tormenting us like it, it's fun it's like it's a game and that's exactly how i feel every time i encounter this entity in the forest is i feel like it like likes to play hide and seek and it likes when i find it and it likes when i step closer and then when i back away it doesn't like it i get sick something happens um my bag flying off the table for one because i try my best not to talk about it as much anymore because it scares my brother um so the fact that i'm not talking about it constantly anymore when it specifically happens in the house and then things physically start to happen it's the same behavior that happens in the forest do you think that 
this thing could be dangerous? Definitely. I think it could get to that point if it wanted to. I feel like it's kind of warned us that it can do what it wants when it has the energy to do so. Um, there are days when you know, my mom's a very like motivated person. She likes to get through the day and get things done no matter how late she got home from work. Like She wants to get up the next day and do what she needs to do. And there are days where she'll sleep the entire day away. Like she'll, she, we, she will not get out of bed once and we have to keep checking on her because she's just so exhausted, like just run down. I hardly sleep anymore because I am either scared of what I'm gonna see in my sleep or I feel like something's watching me. Like I feel like there's something in this house that is, has the ability to slowly just wear us down. So I guess we're gonna try get some answers here but is there any way you could really quickly show us the hot spots yeah absolutely just so we know yeah, so just follow you i'm gonna start with my mom's room because it's right there so she had the she had the um ashes originally over here they're behind you now but they were hanging right here and you can see where the hook was and it was there for months and it never fell, never moved, nobody ever touched it. And it just started swinging one day and then it dropped to the floor. Your uncle's ashes? Yes. Then she moved it over there and it like swung, but it stayed sideways. And that's the only thing that fell off the hook. And there's other things on that hook, you can see it. The necklace is the only thing that fell off that hook. The closet right here, she feels like she's always being watched. She keeps it closed at all times. If I come in here and I have to get something out of her closet and I don't close it, she's like, she freaks out. She doesn't like it. Mm -hmm. This door, I've literally been sitting on that couch. I can see the door handle turn and hear it. And the door either opens or it's like, it's quietly trying to close it. But then other times it'll just slam shut. Like, there's no in-between. Oh, it's bizarre. Mm-hmm. And then, this is the bathroom. And the door is usually, because this door doesn't shut all the way sometimes, it's usually cracked like this. And most of the time I see something kind of go like this. And as soon as I look, it disappears. Mm. Um, you'll be in the shower, and the door will be shut all the way and it'll sound like you hear the door open. You'll peek, the door shut. I've heard, so this closet connects to the shower, shower, like the same wall. I've heard when, like right here, when I'm taking a shower and I'll open the door and I'll peek around. There's nothing, in the, there's nothing in there. It's just towels and makeup. Oh, that's creepy, mm -hmm. once again. When we're in the kitchen. So my bag was literally right here in the middle after I got home from work. I was home alone. I heard it hit the wall right here next to my brother's room. Right here? Right there. So it flew from yeah. here to here. Yeah, we actually had more pictures on the wall. Those all kept falling. And my bag actually, there was a different picture here. This one was higher up over here somewhere and we didn't have all of this here there was another picture here my bag hit it and it broke this clock broke we secured that one because we were scared because sometimes the kid upstairs jumps we didn't think he jumped enough to knock things off the wall so just in case we secured that one I was out here one night and I saw it shaking there was nobody jumping upstairs Wow I noticed there's a lot of like kind of religious praying and God. Yes. Does that have to do with? My mom, she started going to um, church when we lived in Florida. Um, it was kind of like a more modern Christian church. It was kind of like just super chill, like to dip her toe in the water. My uncle, when he passed, he was like a father figure to her. It took a huge toll on her. 
um, they were diagnosed with cancer like two or three days apart. Wow. And he died that same year. And she went from stage one to stage three in six weeks. So it was like a really hard time for the family. So after she lost him is when she started buying this stuff and putting it up because it just made her feel comforting, like it was comforting for her. When we're here and we're like heating something up or using the air fryer, we'll stand like this and we'll watch the bathroom while we're cooking. We will not turn our, bath our backs to the bathroom. So what the hell's in the bathroom? I don't know. It's the same black figure that I see in the forest. Same height and everything. He's seen it, sitting right there at that table when we were doing the access method. You saw it? Yeah. Yeah, I was sitting there in that seat. I was back Victoria against the wall. Here. Oh. I had, my, I had my glasses off, my eyes were closed, we were in the pitch black, and he was like hitting me. He was like, Tori, Tori. And so I got out of it, and he was like, dude, I swear I just saw something in your bathroom. And you can hear in the file, um, the audio recording of us doing it, you can hear, he jumps so hard that he hits whatever he runs into with the chair. Like it scared him. And then we switched and he was over there and I was, I stood right here because I'm terrified of the bathroom. I did not want to sit down. I wanted to be able to be up if I saw something. I saw something from the corner of my eye move over here and he was talking away. And I just saw this black mist shoot past his legs, like floor level. And at that same time, he went, dude, I just felt something cold go across my legs. Wow. And that's as, that's like as close as something has ever come to me. Mm. So you both have seen stuff in here. Oh yeah. 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 And that was the first and the last time he ever came over my house. And now this is the, the, the next time? That, yes. This is the first time you've been back since you saw that? Yep. Yeah. It's a couple months ago. Probably when we two. hang out, he waits for me and he's like, okay, you can come down now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I see him standing right by the exit door right yeah. there. Ready to run. <laughs> how, this place freaked him out. The other day I was sitting on the small couch that I was just sitting at and I saw probably about your height. You know how people, shadows reflect? Mm-hmm. It was like that, but there was no human there. And it was a man, and I just saw him walk across the wall, and then he stopped. And it kind of looked like his head turned, honestly. And it's like he saw me, and he booked it. Really? Like he got caught. Just walking across the wall, and I just sat there frozen. I froze. I didn't know what to do. I was like, Okay, let's process what I just saw <laughs> because my brother's in his room and I don't want to scare him. So I have, uh, there's nothing I can do. Like, I don't, I just, when I see things, I freeze because I don't know what to do. We came here to try and get some sort of an answer for you before we go to the forest. So what we're going to do now is I want to set up our devices around the apartment and see which part of the apartment has like EMF energy, where that's coming from, and see if we can contact this thing. Cause I, I honestly can feel something in here. Like the same type of vibe you get in like a, a haunted place, like the electricity on your skin. Mm -hmm. It's like, I can actually feel something like that in here, which is like bizarre since this is my first time here. Yep. And it's just a normal apartment. But let's set this stuff up. All right. Okay, so I'm making a note. We haven't even set anything else up yet, but already in the bathroom, the music box on the sink is detecting some sort of a movement and there's a, a massive REM spike that triggered that. There you go. Okay, this is about a minute after that last clip. Now uh, this REM pod is going off and that music that music box is going full <laughs> full bore in there. That dude, that one's fing hitting too. What the hell? <laughs> this is nuts, bro. <laughs> Let's reset this. 
Okay, in the bathroom. Shit, it doesn't even want us to sit down. <laughs> okay, so um, or you sit over there. I can move this stuff out of your way. Is this dead? What the fuck? There's no way. Has it ever happened before? No. Should be full battery. Oh, dude, they just picked someone up right when I said that. Jesus. Standing right there in the doorway. That's where that shadow, yes, um, the other day, ran to when he saw me look. Well, there's somebody standing right there. That's a radius of just two or three feet, so we can't set that off. See? That's not us. It has to actually stand in front of it. Oh, did that one just fucking hit? Mm -hmm. Oh, dude, no way. It's like it just walked in the room. You guys mm -hmm. notice that? Yeah. It's like it came from over here and walked right there by the microwave. Oh, that's eerie. Okay, now that it's here, it's all just... Okay, to whoever's here in this apartment or whatever's here, I just want to introduce ourselves and introduce, you know, who we are. My name's Colin. I'm James. I don't mean to scare you. I'm Connor. I'm Tori. We just want to figure out who you are um, and what you want, because you're kind of scaring the people who live here. Ah. <laughs> you are missed. Struggling. Okay, whoever's here, I'm gonna turn on this crazy. This died, by the way. Mm. Oh, what? Look at that's so trippy, bro. I'm gonna turn on this bell device. This is an EMF bell. It's like a REM pod. So watch out. We get Dude, this charged all night in the hotel, actually. Oh, look at it. The land. The land, bro. The land. Okay, this is trippy. I don't know if this is dying or like, what's going on with that? Cause look at it. That's not how that works? No, no. How are they lining up like that together? Are you draining the batteries of their equipment? No, that's what I mean. I didn't delete this. Loved ones call to you. You are missed. I'd also be careful if something's trying to pretend like it's a demon here. <laughs> no. No. Okay, I just want to ask if you're here, are you a human entity? Are you a demonic entity? Can. Camp? Please leave and camp. Like, please leave and go camp in the forest? And leave your camp, meaning like the house. You said run. Hurt them. But at one point it kept saying murder. Um, didn't it say stab at one point? Yep. So. Um, it said kill him. It was telling my mom to run. Mm -hmm. He's coming. Lies. Lies. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa. It's, it's calling you out, dude. We literally have it, like, recorded. Cold. Yeah. Here. Cold in here. Isn't that what your mom... When? Dude, these are going crazy, actually. My mom's room is the only room in the house that gets, like, below freezing. 
So I want you to. Let's bring out the DR60. I'm getting over. Are you staying? <laughs> it told him to leave the first time he came over. And then it said, You're new here. Hmm. Oh, I got chills actually. Do you want us to leave? Can I ask, where did you come from? That's crazy, this bell fucking is dead. Are you here for me? <gasps> Sad. It was me. Crazy, this is dead. Are you here for me? It was me. Yeah, Dude, we- this thing is smart, bro. We came to talk to you tonight. Do you think you guys have a USB-C charger? Yeah. Um, there's one in my mom's room. I would love to use this thing. I'm just gonna walk by these real quick. You are welcome to stay. It said left too soon, and it kept saying, well, you're welcome to stay. Sit and listen. All right, well, we're sitting here and we're listening. Can, can you tell us where you came from? It is present. That sounds mm. like the warning that we were getting. If you're present, give Go us- Go right. Go. Oh. Is that the bathroom or the living room? Why don't you ask it if it's either there or yeah. there to show us where it's Sure. Yeah. You should go. Go right. You should go, bro. The bathroom or the living room, which right do you want us to take? You're safe here. Dude, this is trippy. It's fun. It really is like there's like multiple here. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. like one of them's like, you need to go. Like almost like watching out for you. And then the other one's like, no, it's safe. Like, come stay. Are you in the bathroom? Is that who I usually see? Is it you? Go into eternity. Drain camera. <gasps> that was like very particular. Yeah. Like, we're like, we drained this stuff, now we're gonna drain your cameras. Go ahead, try to drain our camera. I'm just like, I'm waiting for this battery to die. <laughs> I don't know. If you see those red lights, walk towards them and we'll come over there and speak with you. We just want to figure out your story, and hopefully we have some some tools that can help you tell it. Killed? Killed them. The guy with the f***ing girl. Mm-hmm. Oh. Killed them. You Killed them. You are welcome to stay. See. Oh, dude, I got goosebumps Whoa. actually. And it just said go into eternity and kill them. Oh my god, my hair's starting to stand up. So you're welcome to stay in the woods too. Are you from the forest? Yeah. Sure. Cord. Look below. Look below. Oh, that's so weird. It said you should look below. Yeah, it is. That's like a full sentence on two devices. Looking for a way out. Hmm. How many times did something tell us it was stuck here when we were doing the Estes method or stuck wherever it was and was trying to get help? Yep. <clears throat> And then the tapping on my brother's closet, and then me crying. It was sad. And it kept warning us, he's coming, or it's coming. Yeah, unfortunately, we don't know how to get rid of stuff. <laughs> We're just here to try to help you. If you're here, we, we have this device. Maybe we can help you with this in some way. I'm beside you. Locked. I'm beside you. 
and looking for a way out, but not here. The forest? That's the girl tied to a tree, like kind of locked to the tree, can't find her way out. Mary, is that you? I'm gonna run this, let's go in a circle, and I'll ask questions. It is present again. And look at right when that's beside you and it's present, okay. All right, I wanna ask you wherever you are in here. Did you come from the Freetown State Forest? Are you related to Tori? Do you feel me? Beware of the woman. I'm gonna tell you the right side of my body is cold. And that was just like my leg. Killed them again. Beware of the woman. Do you feel me? Connor, I wanna ask. Were you murdered? Do you plan on hurting us? He's here. Who's he? Is he a serial killer? Is he a demonic entity? Little boy. <laughs> Is he the one that's been in the bathroom? Did you hear us? Sounds like multiple. Do we need to be afraid? I miss my life. That's really sad. Were you here? Before I moved in? God protects this place. Why are you torturing Tori by acting so negative? Is there something you want from her? Or something we can do for you? So honestly, guys, I feel like... I mean, think about it. It said... Killed them twice here. He's here. Like, there seems to be that a killer of some sort, somebody who's hurt people, is here. And we've gotten that in the past as well. Then there's a girl. Trust the women. Oh, I got seven. Seven. Beware Trust the women. The woman. Trust the women. Yeah, then there's a, there's like confusing energy. I mean, there could be a girl, but there could be something, like it said on my device, like demon, like there's evil. It there's said evil. it wants you to stay like, it's fucking like. There's some, oh. ooh. That's where the negative energy is. Right when we talk about the demon, bro. The rumors are false. The rumors are false, oh. Dude, it's trying to convince you that it's not bad. Always tries to silence other voices when we do the SS method. Goosebumps. That's crazy, actually. Yep. You can tell he's angry, like angry. He Who makes it? it no. Who is that over there? Notice how that's the only one to hit. Not that one, not mm -hmm. those ones. As soon as it said that something was coming, that one stopped. Yeah. Who is this? It's going nuts. Four lights, dude. Look at those lights. Look at what are going off right there. Did that just say four lights? Yep. Four lights. I'm not happy that you did that. Dude, what is that feed, that noise? 
Come out no, of that? No. <laughs> they need to just turn it down too. That's crazy, dude. Okay. Yeah, that whatever that Yeah. It's trying to bug us. He likes when he's the only one that's heard. Right. And he makes that very clear. Oh, dude. Be wary of him. Mm -hmm. Connor, be wary of him. He's a very, very in control, dominant energy. All right, I want to ask you wherever you are in here. Did you come from the Freetown State Forest? Associate. Are you related to Tori? Dude, you gotta turn that off. That's crazy. Elmer. Elmer? Do you know an Elmer? Alright, I want to ask you wherever you are in here. Did you come from the Freetown State Forest? That's my best friend that's experienced things with me in the forest. That's who we met through. I, I've been friends with her since I was a kid. Really? That's her. The one that experienced things next to the electrical place. That's her. I wonder if she knows an Elmer. That's the second time that we've done an investigation here and her name's come through. That's bizarre. We didn't Skull. Even... Skull. That's wild, dude. <laughs> Right when it said he's here, there's a growl. You heard that too? My name's Colin. I'm a paranormal investigator. I'm just trying to help you out. I'm going to the forest tonight. If there's something that we can do to help you leave this family alone. What do you want? Can you give us your name? Is there a reason that you've been hanging out here? Why... Why did you choose to try to get into contact with me? Did you come from the Freetown State Forest? Did one of you come from the forest? Can you give us any type of number of how many of you there is here? Why do you seem so angry? 
What happened to you? Are you angry that we're here? That we're living here? Finally, we're heading out to the Freetown Forest tonight. Will you follow us out there so we can talk one on one? I want to ask you, what do you want with Tori and her family? My name's Colin. I'm a paranormal investigator. I'm just trying to help you out. I'm going to the forest tonight. There's something that we can do to help you leave this family alone. say a couple things. Yeah, me too. I'm excited to play that back with some headphones on. Me too. That's crazy. Yeah. Well, want to put the Estes stuff on? Yeah, absolutely. All right, let's just have you do it right here. Okay. All right. So, we want to... His. His? I don't think so. It's just a gif. Uh-huh. So I don't know if that his is anything to do with that. dad's name. <laughs> oh. Yeah, street money. Street money? Mm -hmm. Um. Whoever's here, we've been speaking with you. Can you just tell us who you are or where you came from? Just anything about yourself? Is there anybody here that doesn't want us here? Are we intruding on you? Fort. Vincent. Fort, Fort Vincent. Vincent? Isn't that a fort? Are you from Fort Vincent? I feel like I just heard like a baby crying. Can you tell us what you're doing in this place? Why are you here? You can be mistaken. 
Why won't you speak to us? It's like you got really quiet. Stella. Please wait and listen. You sh this one said you should go, and that one says please wait and listen. It's like two very different things talking to us. Like something that wants to ta us to learn about this thing, and something that's like, you need to leave. I mean, like, she's literally not saying sure anything. Like a growl, I want to say it was. Is this Stella that we're talking to now? Please leave here. <laughs> Why don't you want us here? I know you. Me? Who do you know? He doesn't like you. I am. Did you come from the forest? Can you say yes or forest or something like that? We want to figure out where you came from. I heard a voice, but I couldn't tell what it said. Where did you come from? We gotta figure that question out. Can you tell us? Running away fast. Running away fast. Trust the woman. Dude, there's a bad man and a good woman here. That's what I've been saying. That's exactly what she's saying too this entire time, that the victim, the girl, she's seen her and she feels like she's just sad and wants to talk and there's the evil man, the killer. I just heard somebody, like, yell. Here. If the girl's here, we want to talk to you. Can you tell us who this evil man is or where he came from? We're trying to figure this out, please. It's like this thing just does not want to talk. That's what, but that's what I'm saying. Somebody just said something, but I couldn't make it out. Like it's being silenced. But I mean, none of the devices are going off Help anymore. Help me. The others scare me. Help me, the others scare me? It's like the girl wants to talk, but like, she can't. It's actually insane how little she's getting. It's like, it's like this evil dude is like standing right here and like will not let anybody else say anything. It's f***ing, it's actually really bizarre. This is the woman. Do you have anything left to say to us? Monitoring. Monitoring. No, please leave. <laughs> <laughs> So we should leave? Laugh. Laugh. <laughs> I died in my sleep. The girl. Oh! The girl. No fucking way. That's crazy. No fucking way, actually. So no this, fucking way. This is the girl. She was just explaining to us that the girl literally died in her sleep that she thinks is here in the forest, which would mean that if that girl's here, the evil man probably came from the forest as well. Can you tell? It just sounded like a baby crying again. This is crazy, dude. I just heard like a really deep laugh. Oh, I was saying laugh. It said laugh, bro. Well, yeah. Like I'm hearing it again. Dude. It keeps doing it. What? 15. The girl was 15. Wow. And he's laughing about the crime. He's laughing about the crime, dude. That's Danger. Oh my god. It keeps bro. happening. Danger. Whoa, bro. That is actually insane. And it makes perfect sense. Oh my god.
I can hear it. No, I no no no. It no. sounds like a cartoon, like oh oh oh. Like ah 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 Like ah ah. And it's at the base of my ears, and he's like, it's like he's behind me. And oh. remember when that happened before? And it's deep. I can what? hear it. Wait, what, what were you just hearing? Look to it the was, right. Oh my god. It was like a deep, guttural, evil laugh. What right? Maybe you're right, because I can't believe you're right. Where are you? So, what did you hear at the end? Just a... It just kept happening over and over I again. It was here. What did that say? I worked here. Maybe the bar or something? The hospital. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It was like a deep, guttural like evil laugh. I could hear it. It sounded like Bowser's laugh. <laughs> and that that's what the voice sounds like when we do it. Really? The guy that talks over everybody the, or the male entity, that's what he sounds like on ours. And on yours is always a bunch of different type of voices. Yeah. And it's always, There's always a female trying to talk to me and warn me about something and he like will literally he'll scream if he has to. Exactly what we just got. It's so bizarre because this thing said laugh like a minute before you started hearing that laughter. And it just was saying like danger while you were laughing. And we were literally saying like, can you just let her hear one thing, please? Because you weren't like saying anything. And then immediately you started like hearing laughing. And we were. And it also, died. I died in my sleep, 15. We got both of those on our devices as well. I think we just confirmed that at least two of the spirits are from the forest. Yeah. And I kept hearing a baby like cry in the distance, like a newborn was like screaming. Regina. Hear us. Unfortunately, we would love to be able to stay all night and get more answers, but. I weren't here. On both devices, it has to have something to do with this then. That's trippy. They prefer Freeze. They prefer Brockton or Boston. Most people will not go to Morton unless they absolutely have to because a lot of people go into that hospital and they don't come out. The hospital across the street? Yes. Like I was about to say, we would love to stay in well, maybe we can come back, but we have somebody that drove a long way to meet us that we have to go meet right now. But I think honestly, we got some really good answers here. It sounds like it is the victim, the 15 year old girl from the forest, and it is an evil man who killed somebody in the forest, whether he killed that girl or if it's a completely different evil person that's just saying that. I don't know, but we're going to go try to figure that out. I don't think it's anything dangerous here, but you just need to make sure to tell it no. You know. We just try to ignore it and pretend he's not here. Make sure you're protecting yourself too. Nicholas. That was the name you were getting the other night. Yep, that's the name we've gotten every night since I heard it at the Conjuring house. Seriously? Yeah. I said that's fucking weird. And the moment she stop talking or doing that this thing hasn't said a single word miss barely has either any final thoughts um i think i was right about <laughs> who it was <laughs> and i'm kind of glad that i stuck with my gut about it because all of the things that were happening to like, me i'm at peace um, all of the things that were happening to me, it fit like a puzzle with what happened to her. And it was like she was trying to tell me exactly what happened to her, or at least show me. And I feel like I was also right about the, the male entity that's here. Um, whether he keeps just following me back and forth as well. He clearly showed himself tonight. Um, and uh, I'm just gonna ignore him. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's kind of crazy how spot on you I are. I don't mean harm. I mean, this is the girl talking. 
You saying that it was the victim and the guy, you come here and that's exactly what we're getting? I mean, you're, you're onto something for sure. I just, I literally felt it down to my bones. I knew, I knew it was her. I just felt it was really odd that I found out the truth about her after everything that I experienced. I had no idea what her name was. And then my mom says that she knew her, so, or her sisters. And, I'm in my sixties. How old was he when he killed her? Or when he died? Joey, how old was he when he died? So we were definitely picking up on an evil energy, a dark energy that was definitely there in Tori's apartment. Her family knew that's what it was, but we honestly feel like it was something much deeper than that, something way bigger than we were thinking. So like Tori had assumed, it seemed like the person or thing or entity that's with her in her apartment is attached to the murder of Mary Aruda, who was the little girl, two days past 15 years old, who was abducted and found tied to a tree rotting months after she went missing inside the Freetown State Forest. And that spirit could also be followed by the man who killed her, James Cater. But we don't know. I mean, just the evidence that we were capturing was really lining up with that in a way that was freaky. I mean, absolutely freaky to see. But in my opinion, there's just, there's so much more to the evil in the Freetown State Forest than just a couple serial killers or rituals. I mean, this is a place where for centuries people have been coming to perform rituals. And where, I mean, even in the 80s and 90s, this place was a satanic hotspot where people were actually murdering people for Satan and the devil and doing rituals in the middle of the night there. But we felt like the only way that we could get answers it wasn't by sitting on our asses in our hotel room. It wasn't by going through the drive through and enjoying a nice hamburger. It was by strapping on our boots and heading out into the Freetown State Forest at midnight. So we're heading out to the forest right now. It's about 11 o'clock at night. We're gonna get there at 11.07. And it's nights like this that make me wonder is it worth it what we're doing is it too dangerous sometimes how safe is paranormal investigating i mean this thing followed tori home from this place and it's made her life a living hell and the lives of her family members her brother who didn't want to be on camera was so afraid that he left the apartment he said he, he got a bad feeling. Her mom came back at the end and said it felt different. And this thing came from this fucking place. This is not, not a good place. Freetown State Forest is a very evil place. And I don't know, I just feel, I feel something almost under my skin right now while we're driving out there. As if, almost as if something's waiting for us. And it's just, I don't know, it's not good. I'm a little bit f***ing freaked out to see where this is going to lead us tonight. Because, yeah. This place is just no f***ing joke. Just heard like 
A human scream, animal scream. What do you think that was? I don't know either. Fuck this. This is the entrance <sighs> behind me. This is one of the entrances. God, the wind. That wind is creepy. This is one of the entrances to the Freetown State Forest. We're gonna be going deep into the forest tonight on this investigation. And something interesting that I need to share with you is that back in 2018, at this exact spot, I think I heard Bigfoot, an alien, some sort of creature, my whole family heard it. We were actually here on this exact trail walking about 200, 300 yards down that way. And we heard what sounded like something going, like that not kidding there were these people that were hiking and walking past us right when it happened and everybody described hearing this at, at, like the same thing and nobody knew what it was we talked about it our entire hike it's still something i think about to this day and it happened right here i also got scared out of the woods because i ran in and i went that way it was a full moon during a thunderstorm and I found an old chimney back there and it sounded like somebody came running at me. So I ran out of the woods. And that was the last time I was here. And that was five, almost six years ago. That's f crazy, dude. Oh my God, six years. 2018 was six years ago. Damn. That's nuts. <laughs> that's actually crazy to think I don't know about, it's dude. Crazy. I know. <laughs> but, oh, Pookie. Oh, God. Oh my God, he scared me. Shit. What's up, Pookie? Dude, this place is creepy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, no shit, bro. Dude, absolutely insane. I mean, did you show them with the light off just how dark it is? No, go ahead, Connor. <laughs> That's what we see with absolutely no light. That's f dude. I mean, <sighs> yeah, want to shout yourself out so people can subscribe to you? Yeah, well, hey guys, I'm Tyler uh, with Tyler Reynolds TV on YouTube. Tyler's our f boy. A oh boy. So make sure to go subscribe <laughs> to him. Thank you. And, uh, yeah, this is like, honestly, dude, I didn't think it was gonna be as creepy, but like being here right now, this is like very, very fucking creepy. Oh yeah, and I mean, it's because beyond this gate, technically right here, it, we're open for anything. Shut the fuck up. Open for anything. <laughs> what the, why does he have to say anything? that, man? <laughs> but that's the part that anything. makes it so interesting about, you know, Bridgewater Triangle and Freetown yeah. Ledge. Yeah, actually, hold up. We're gonna interview him. Let me grab this other camera. Hi, my name is Tyler Reynolds with Tyler Reynolds TV here on YouTube. And uh, it's been a year since I've been into the Bridgewater Triangle, let alone Freetown Forest that's in back of us right now. This place is honestly no joke. It could be one of the top haunted locations here on the East Coast side, leaving it a huge area that they do call the Bridgewater Triangle. and. The stories that go beyond that are, you know, not just spiritual. It goes beyond, you know, um, stuff that is beyond this world, they say, throughout aliens or whatever that people like to be known as in that direction or whatever you guys like to call them as. But there goes against like monsters. This is a huge, heavy area that people have seen um, what they call pukwudgies, about three feet tall, um, little like almost goblin looking creatures. But rumor has it that they can turn into orbs and balls of light that you can physically see in person. Now, they're blue. They could be anywhere. I've never personally seen them, but I've heard stories of people actually witnessing them with their own eye. This place has tons of stories. It isn't just going along with spiritual and you know outer dimension things. Uh, this is used to be a huge ground to where people would bring bodies. They would bury them here. It's pretty much a graveyard of an unknown number. And that's what's honestly the creepiest part that I feel. They've had cult activity here. They've had so many just different dangerous activities spot that we possibly could be going to tonight they've done rituals uh they've done all of these different sacrifices the stories are just the stories go on and on with you know everything that is in this area it leaves it all up for question you know is some of this real or you know are these stories real no one truly knows other than that there have been bodies found here going along with the cult activity 
and you know rituals that people have you know done here it's a lot of kids who come and are willing to learn but they don't know anything about the process of what they're actually doing so you never know the communication that you're having are you trying to talk to simple spirits or is it demonic activity that is talking to you is it going to be shown as bad or is it going to try and loop you into a trap making you feel like you're in a safe environment it that's all up for question i've never went back here and looked for that uh we came here like i said a year ago and what we found was just interesting activity of things that wanted to communicate but we never got clear uh clear answers going along to anything that we were talking about so it's going to be really interesting to possibly see what we can get so what happened to you here last year my man so yeah um last year me and josh came and uh we did three different locations in the uh Bridgewater Triangle, uh, being Freetown, our last spot. Uh, it was very interesting. I Did don't. Did you hear that? What'd you hear? Woo! If you're there, can you do that again? And then it goes completely silent, no wind or anything. <laughs> So you want me to keep going? Yeah, continue. <laughs> so, yeah, going back a year ago, me and Josh came to uh, the Bridgewater Triangle making Freetown Ledge our last spot. Now we went, tried to find a bunker. We went um, trying to find specifically puck wedgies. And all of that was super interesting. But I was very intrigued about this last spot. We did something that is questionable, if some people want to look at it that way. But each and every night we uh, held... I actually held on my back a real human skull waiting for the right moment to try and communicate with either the person from the skull or to see if it was possibly a trigger object. It didn't really bring anything back into play with what we were trying to go after, but it led a very interesting night. Um, due to the second night we came here, we tried to film uh, for the last part, and right as we get to the ledge, we turn off all of our lights because we see and we hear people off in the distance so we get closer to the water we look up at the top of the hill all of a sudden you see a bunch of lights just turn on and you hear screaming then all of a sudden you just hear charging coming down the hill me and Josh probably ran faster than we ever ran and we booked it out of here and came to finish off that series another day but this place is spooky it's interesting you feel like you're being watched you feel like there's multiple people in the trees just ready to jump out at you but at the end of the day overall there's nobody out there there's nobody here there's no cars it's only us and that's what's going to make things very interesting because if there's any noise of another person it's not us God. this f***ing guy bro <laughs> jesus tyler so who do you think was chasing you man that night, i don't want to run into that that night i would like to say there was people there were a few trucks that were parked a little bit down the road in that direction but why would they be chasing you that's the question now does that fall under what that cult activity was or were they just kids that were just here doing what we were doing there's no question because we ran out of there there was the, we we didn't want to find out that that was the biggest deal is that it was one of those things where we just wanted to go. Yeah, run now, ask questions exactly, later. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. But I would definitely say that this is the creepiest forest in all of the East Coast. Well, we've had an interesting night already. We got into contact with a dark entity, with Tori, who she claims is a, a dark spirit or entity that followed her home from this forest. I mean, with the amount of cults and devil worshiping. What was that? It almost sounded like a growl. Yeah. In the distance. Did you hear that? Uh huh. I came from the fucking woods right here, bro. Can't even see him, it's so dark. Okay, just gonna ignore that. <laughs> um, but it really is true, man. Like, you had Carl Drew and the Fall River satanic cult that we talked about earlier. It's just murders, murders, murders happening out here in the 80s and some of these murders being related to the occult. And for years, I mean, I've talked to people that remembered this place being a actual hotspot for cult activity. And I'm not talking about just kids that are going out to 
graffiti the rock with a pentagram like that's everywhere i'm talking about people that were living in fall river massachusetts they were involved in these cults that were linked to murder and they were coming out here to do these midnight masses and like evil ceremonies because they felt like this forest and these woods were a fucking place where they could connect to the evil where it was easier and where that like negativity was present they could just grab it so there's fucking something in these woods and right now this is like the real life blair witch project there's three of us dude yeah who makes it out alive nobody in that movie I they know. all can die <laughs> <laughs> Oh, shit. Okay. <laughs> well, you guys have a good night. I appreciate this as much. You guys got that. <laughs> well, right. without further ado, man, please, God, please watch over us and please honestly be with us in our souls. Just cover us with a white light, please, and help protect us from whatever darkness or evil may lie beyond this gate inside of those woods. Please guide us and, yeah. Just keep the demons away. Amen. Amen. All right. Let's hope that works. Let's fingers crossed. <laughs> 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 yeah, All right. That's a, like a shot of our... Why are they staring at us like that? Dude, what the fuck, bro? Dude, what what the fuck, man? What the fuck? Again? No, dude. Okay. They, what did they do? They just gone? What the f was that, bro? I do not know. Wait, what? Say that you said that you saw that? Oddly enough, I don't know what we were just seeing. They went back and forth, what, three different times? Yeah. When we were leaving the last time that we were here. There was two cars that were doing the same exact thing where they just kept going back and forth, back and forth. There was one time they stopped right here. We got in our cars and we just left. That same car then came back, turned around, and at that point we just sped right out of here. I mean, does it make these locals even act crazy? Like they live in this triangle and it just, I don't know. I don't, I don't know how to respond to that activity right there to where this is not a road that you're just gonna go back and forth on. What was the whole reasoning behind that? And they went down there, like turned around and went just like a little bit up. They the were road. staring right at us too. Did you see that? Yeah. You don't think they'd rob us, right? That that's like the part that I don't wanna think about, but at the same time I don't like that. <laughs> <laughs> well you know I mean I I can't say no. Yeah. You know what yeah. I mean? We should be okay. Someone steals all of our fucking footage from the oh trip. Oh my god, I killed myself. Me too. Maybe bring the memory cards. Should I? <laughs> yeah. Maybe. Yeah. Alright. Oh god. Oh, look, look dude, 666. Six, six. No way. Don't you see it? Where? Or maybe I'm tripping out. <laughs> no, look at dude, the way that that wood is. I can literally see a six. Really? Yeah. I see a six. A six. Like, look it. You have to point it out. Right dude. here, if you look from a certain angle, it looks like it's six, six. Oh, you see what I'm talking about? It's almost like natural. You fucking see that? Or am I tripping out? Like, look, right here's a perfect six. Yeah, no, right I here. see it. I see it now that you said that. And then there's another one right next to it. 
don't know. Tree looks Ooh, pretty look fucking. That. You hear that? These are some fucking creepy woods, dude. have the feeling like we're just being watched from all angles right now yes like dude it honestly feels like something is like following us super slowly from the back that's just my first initial reaction i mean i don't think you could have a creepier night dude like the wind blowing pitch black icy yeah. cool the leaves look like they're straight out of halloween time <laughs> honestly you know it's insane it's creepy you know what always concerns me is people living out here. Yeah, you never know. Like, especially some dude that gets like territorial. Don't like, f say that shit, man. I'm just saying. <laughs> yeah, you gotta be f***ing prepared for if that happens, bro. I mean. What if those were the people that chased you out? Like people living out here, man. Dude, that's the problem, you never know. <sighs> Great. I, I just love spooky shit so much, and this is like top top of the mountain type spooky. Oh yeah. <laughs> like the, to, this is like ranked all the time as the most haunted forest in America. And being out here at fucking midnight on a cold, winty, 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 cold, chilly winter night. There's just something. Oh, the wind stopped right when I said that behind us. You guys ever sit and think like, and this is a genuine question, like we hear all the time about like cults and like people doing these creepy ass rituals. I've talked to people that claim to have actually like found people doing that shit on their property. Like, what the f would you do if we came around the corner and there was like 10 people in robes? You know what I mean? Like, genuinely. I'm throwing this bag down and I'm fucking taking off. Yeah. I'm thinking we join them. Oh, shit. <laughs> if you want to do a ritual, that's it right there. Well, there you go, man. That you know? is not the answer I expected. I mean, but I appreciate it. Unless if they start growling at me, then I feel like I'm threatened. I don't know. I'm yeah, gonna... I think I'd be out of there, bro. You want to be intrigued? Not even a little bit? I'd definitely be intrigued, but like, I feel like they'd f***ing like kill you. Did you hear that? I thought I heard a voice. I'm not even lying. Hello? Hello? Okay, you can. Off in the distance. Hear what? You can hear like whispering back and forth. I thought it sounded like singing. Singing? Well, I don't know what I heard, other than just some type of voice. I think the creepiest thing that could happen is when you yell hello to hear something back. That is true. I would say... Um, or a whistle and you hear a whistle back. Let's fucking keep walking, Jesus. Yeah, this is definitely the type of behavior that gets you killed in a horror movie, <laughs> you know? <laughs> like going out to the America's most haunted forest at midnight, just the three of us, no weapons or anything. We always watch horror movies and we're like, oh, we'd be so good in this scenario. Like we'd get out of there so fast. And then it became really evident to us when we went to the Saw escape room in Vegas that we're not good at this, and we would most definitely die. Yeah. yeah. It does. Like plastic burning. Why does it smell like smoke? 
It legit smells like a like a plastic burning smell. It smells almost like fireworks. Well, look at this. God, we're so f If something happens, we're f bro. So, I'm stopping the footage right there. This is the disturbing thing that I was talking about. So, as we're walking through the forest, Tyler, Connor, and I all begin to smell burning plastic. Like, straight up something, like a plastic item being burned very close to us. Um, we didn't smell it the entire walk, you know. In there, it's not like it was drafting from a factory or something. It was, like, extremely strong that just hit us right in that area. And then it was gone. Um, and something like that can really only mean two things. We were, you know, 30, 40 minutes into the forest at that point. So either we weren't alone in the forest and somebody was nearby burning something or a spirit or something was trying to show us something. Now what makes this even creepier, why I say this is disturbing. The next night we were filming at Norwich Asylum in Norwich, Connecticut. And property manager Shannon was telling us a story about how she smelled burning flesh in the past. And while we were doing that interview, she said it distinctly smells like something. I'm going to play that clip now. Had an incident. We had a psychic here that was completely blindfolded. Luna, she's on, she's on TikTok, but she was blindfolded when she was brought here. She was talking to me about, when we were on the steps, about a man she kept feeling. When we were walking down here, she was talking about burning bodies she's like i feel like there's a lot of burning bodies underneath here and i'm it's how i kind of know that some people are factual because we were right in that area and as she was talking about it we started smelling like burning plastic very heavy and this was right after the fire that happened at the admin building to the point where we were running around thinking that someone was setting the building on fire and she was talking about that they were burning bodies underneath that she thinks that the body that there are bodies at some point that were burned underneath there we didn't find anything and but what i had to tell her though is that my brother when he was 17 he was severely burned in a in a fire and he was lived at shriners hospital burn center out in boston and the distinct smell of burning flesh is smells like burning plastic and when I was 14 when that happened and that smell when I smell that smell it brings me right back to that time and that's the smell when she started talking about it everybody my son was there everybody was there that smell was so prevalent at that moment and it was just it's, it's a trigger smell for me it's it's one of those things and that was the second time that that happened that day when she was talking about it and there was nothing else but it was right here and that's the staircase to the basement so i gotta interrupt you for a second so you've smelled it before a burning body smells like burning plastic burning flesh smells like burning. yeah so the best way that you can actually um that i can describe that as a smell of, of burning flesh is by if you take any kind of like a a plat that plasticky if you burn it that's exactly what burning. So, Do you have I'm, any good? I'm going to interrupt for one second for our video. That's insane that you say that because last night when we were deep in the Freetown State Forest, we were smelling like burning plastic, like really strongly. And all of us were like, what's that door over there? But all three of us were like, that's fun plastic being burned and we said that like multiple times mm -hmm. so and it would stop and then we'd walk a little bit further and then it, you could start smelling it again you're like mm -hmm. so that's like really really creepy that yeah you just said that to us because that brings a whole other level of creepiness Seriously. to what we were experiencing last night yeah so yeah that's so knowing that when you go in and think about places where you've been if you've smelled that before so that's what that's what stood out the most for me is that 
every time I, I smelled that actually just the other day, not here at a different location, and it made me stop. And I was, it was actually at my, my job. I was in, in a hallway, and, and it just, it was, I was like, where is there, I was joking around, like, where is there a body? But now it smells, that's, it's like that chemical kind of smell. It's, it's very, it's distinct, you know, when you smell. Yeah, that's exactly what plastic. we were smelling. Because it wasn't like wood burning last no. night. It was like fucking like plastic. Yeah, I know. You know the difference between wood so and that's really wood smells creepy. nice. Like the plastic has that chemically kind of. So, guys, what the hell is that? I mean, the look on Connor and I's faces was just absolutely, we were astounded at that point because it smelled just like burning plastic the night before. So, were we smelling. A residual body burning out there was there somebody actually out in the woods like burning a corpse i i mean we have no explanation it's just it's a very distinct smell and it was very strong we smelled it multiple times it was almost following us i don't know if that was a sign or i don't know what the hell that means but we had no idea that burning flesh smelled like plastic and looking back at it it's frightening that we kept walking into the darkness even though we smelled something like that but it only got worse from there. Well, at least I die with all my sweet pookies. <laughs> Dude, I really don't want to run into somebody up there, bro. It smells like. Hello? If there's anybody out here, we're just trying to do a little ghost hunt. We don't want to cause any trouble, so just let us know that you're out here, please. If you don't want us to come, just let us know and we'll turn back. Huge branch snapping. I thought it sounded like. Doo -doo 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 -doo. Aren't Bigfoot known to bang shit together? Yeah. He just made his lights and make a Oh! They got bears up here? Yes. Very red. What? Very red. Very red. <laughs> Dude. <laughs> yeah. Now it could be my eyes with the light that's going on, but I thought, like, you know, I, I don't know, it's like, it looks like there's a blue light right there. Hello? You don't see it? Is that my eye? It could be my eyes. Dude, look at that little f***ing... Is that like a fort that somebody built? Fort? A lot of sticks right there. Huh? Yeah. Sounds like it was low to the ground too, did it not? 
Hello? Already? Already? That was a full battery, bro. So this light is acting up. Yours just got drained. That sounded like bah, bah. someone banging sticks together. I feel like I keep hearing shit, dude. Is that dying? No, no, this is my light. Yep, I see it dying right here. Oh, yeah. Are we close? Huh? Are we close? Like Paint on the tree. That is a very creepy tree. Just when you think this forest can't get any creepier, it gets creepier. It does. Look at that, dude. This is literally a scene out of a horror film. Pentagram over the cross. Yo, oh, I, dude, I didn't even notice that. That's spooky. Well, that's ominous. What the f do you think happened here? It's also crazy to think if we would have came out here just like a couple days earlier, covered in snow. Right? Oh yeah. Completely. Yeah, all this was covered in snow about maybe I a bet, foot. I bet that is f***ing creepy as shit. Oh yeah. Like the silence of- Imagine, right? Imagine you're the only footsteps coming back here. Two, two people, say it's just you guys, and you see another set of footprints on the way back. God. Only coming this way, right? So this is where you started hearing people yelling before? Yeah, so we heard screaming. Where is it? This is, this is what you want to come see. Look at that. Do you guys know about the story of the white woman? No. So, there is, if I'm gonna say the, where the most energy is, it's gonna be on top of this cliff, right up this way. And I think for what we wanna do, that's gonna be the best spot for communication that we're gonna have all tonight. The main story over here, did you hear that? I heard, ah! That was weird, dude. I can't believe y'all didn't hear that shit. That you're hearing stuff that we're not at all. Like even from the start when we were, you heard that voice right by the cars. Yeah. Sound guy. <laughs> all right. But so the story is, and I don't know, it like kind of goes under the Romeo and Juliet story almost to where it was this guy and girl weren't able to be together. I don't know if it was back to Native American times or just, you know, two different types of people who... If it was just two types of people who were not supposed to be together and their families just did not let that happen. So, uh, the, the story is, and I, I, it, could, it, it could be different. It's more of a local legend story, if anything. But, um, there's ones of where, you know, she came here and was left alone and she took her life by jumping off of this cliff. And, you know, there's other ones to where it was just, you know, something happened again with her that, you know, didn't involve jumping off. But the story is, is that if you're here, what? sound though. No, that's not like a tree crack. That sounded like fabric tree. ripping. They, they did, they did not, they sound just like that. What the f***, dude? But yeah, so, I don't know what the story is, but all I know is that there have been reports of people being able to see the woman in white up on top of the ledge while you're down here, or people have said that they've reported of seeing this woman in white jumping off into the water in the middle of the night. It's creepy. <laughs> no. no. no.
But I mean, <laughs> if we're gonna <laughs> no. <laughs> if you want to talk about where people do all of these sacrifices and rituals, it's gonna be on top of that cliff. We're not going up there, are we? This is why you guys are here. Let me see. Shine a light. Dude, I don't know if I can make it up that high with this gear. Bro, I'm like dead already. I, dude, I feel like that, that's where you guys want to be. I gotta get Connor to say this. What did you just say? Uh, I said it sounds like a fucking alien in my backpack. <laughs> we actually found an alien, took it, and put it yeah, in the bag. It's in, yeah, it's in the bag. <laughs> we abducted the alien. Sorry, I just, sometimes I'll get this really bad ringing in one ear, and oh. it's always right before something big. Which ear? My right ear. Male. Hmm? Male. Male right, female left. A male spirit? That's a male spirit. That's like a um, psychic thing. Are you still filming? What was yeah. that? What the f*** was that, bro? No, seriously, what was that? I right there, right there. Like, it's, I heard. That sounds, that sounds like a creature. I don't even have my camera. I'm not even filming. Dude, right when I said my ear rang? Yeah. What the f***, bro? Actually. Yo, what's our, actually, like, what's our plan if something happens? Wrong. But, like, I can't, I literally physically could not run back with that gear bag on. Well, that's the thing. We wouldn't run with the gear bag on. If our life's in danger, we're fucking getting out of here. Grab the SDs and run. <laughs> All right, let's go to the top of this fucking creepy cliff, man. Spooky stuff right here. Yeah, this fucking sucks, dude. <laughs> you sure you know where you're going? Um, well. Gotta be this way. We're gonna die. I don't know how how we got lost. How about this? I think one? there's a clearing over here. Oh. What? I swear I just saw some like something yellow and then something move. I'm about to give up on this. We're definitely at the top of the fucking hill. It's definitely a path right here, but like, where does this go to? And yeah, we need to go straight that way. Oh my oh, god. Go where? Through the woods. Down? That's what. We came from down there, didn't we? Look, it's straight this way, it's this direction. That's where we have to go. All right, so we are going. We are going. Are you sure we're headed the right way? God, I don't know how this is messed up. Well, this is a very Blair Witch Project. Damn, bro, we are lost. Yeah! Oh my god! How crazy was that? There was a road? How wild was that, dude? <laughs> what the f? <laughs> That's the last time I let you leave. <laughs> this is why I like houses. God. This is why I don't like to leave the house. Who's that? 666. Six, six. I don't know about that. Welcome. Freetown Ledge. Ah. <laughs> sure is spooky up here. What the f is this? Too bad you can't see shit. Shut up. You better not start the rain. Oh, dude, I could see it. Oh, I could see it all day. Go for it, let me steal that. Oh. What? Yeah. 
It's fucking one right now. I didn't think about it. I can feel the raindrop. Look at this. This drizzle. Yeah, yeah, it's not gonna be good. Yeah. My only yeah. concern is this wind. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no shit, pal. <laughs> Look at this. Oh my god. Are you fucking with me right now? What the fuck, Tyler? What the fuck, man? This fuck. He goes. Oh yeah, it starts it's supposed to rain at one. It's one fifteen. It's fucking dude. But we got dude. But we got out of the car at like eleven. Fuck. Dude, I'm a little concerned about getting back through all those low, low areas. It's to starting out. to come now. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so we suffered through that all the way to get up here, only for it to start fucking raining the moment we got up to the ledge. Uh, Tyler said it was supposed to start at one. None of us thought about it, and it's 1.15. So now, if we don't start going back now, all of that area that we just walked through is gonna be pouring rain and like streams, and we might not even be able to get back. So we gotta fucking go. Like, look at this. This started the moment we got up here. And the bike's about to die. Yep. God damn it. <laughs> <laughs> oh God. <laughs> Hello? We're gonna have Spirit Talker silent right now. <gasps> secret. Secret. Is it like a secret? Like they're hiding secrets. They don't want us out here. What on earth was that? That thunder up above. What secrets are you hiding in these woods? I'm gonna get out another device. Viking? Me? I mean, people, it's actually crazy, dude. People always, this isn't me like you. I don't know people are gonna think I, I, I'm not trying to sound cocky, but people always tell me I look like Thor. Like yeah. they come up to me like on the fucking street and just say that because of my long blonde hair and beard. I like the forest. Oh! Oh! My God. oh! Dude, that is way too accurate. You like the forest? What do you like about the forest? We were told you were evil. Do you like it because it's easy to kill somebody out here? Or hide a body? Or hide secrets? <clears throat> You saying fuck it? Yeah. I'm gonna cut on my phone. Okay guys, so it's still fucking pouring rain out. We're still back pretty deep in the forest. We decided to just get out the spirit talker while we were trying to let this rain pass. And <coughs> it's been giving us such crazy responses that I got this this camera out and we're just gonna see if we can get anything. Chase, Chase distract. What are, we, what are we doing right now? Dude? What? It's not that we were chased, but we went down the wrong path. We got distracted. Chase and distract. Oh, you know what I mean? Did you hear that scream? No. Chase and distract. And the rain's picking up again like crazy. But you know, it's like we got distracted, went down this wrong path. Now it's like in a spot to where we don't know where we're at. Is this the chase? You're chasing us in the wrong direction. Please wait and listen. Be careful in here. 
This has been f***ing insane, actually. It's literally like f***ing hell's forest. We came here with the question of why, why did you follow Tori from this forest? Are you truly a demon? Scott. Is there a demon here? Where are you? Bodies below. <gasps> That's what we were what we saying. Were saying dude. It's like an endless graveyard. Bodies are everywhere. That's exactly what we were saying in the beginning. Where are the bodies? How many bodies? Oh my god. It's like every time we start talking about shit like this, rain starts coming down even harder. This is what we do for our videos, people. Yeah. If you haven't yet, please go like and subscribe and pray for us. I'm curious. Where are the bodies? I'm fucking soaking wet right now. Nervous. Nervous. Nervous to share? What are you nervous about? It's like weird timing with that wind picking up. <coughs> taunt. She was literally saying taunt. that the spirit that follows her around likes to taunt and torment her. This whole night we've been fucking tormented. Look at us, bro. Look at me. Look at what I've been reduced to. Yeah, this is I mean, fucking miserable. <coughs> this is hell. This is like being in hell right now. This is bad. I swear I just saw some type of light back there. Me too. Okay, yeah? Yeah. Let's go back to the car for a second. We can talk this out. We got <laughs> yeah. We're still really far back. We got to make our way towards the front. We have to find. We have to hard. find where we're going. I don't know if we were forced out of the forest by an evil entity. If we were forced out by nature herself. If we were just being warned by something that we shouldn't be in there that evening. But there's definitely no doubt in my mind that we were completely forced out of the forest and. I mean, we were planning on staying there for an hour, two hours at least, and we couldn't even get 10 seconds of footage. So it's almost like there's, there was either somebody watching over us or there's something that the forest, as an entity of its own, didn't want us to find. But once we got back to our vehicle and we opened up the trunk of the car, we decided we came all the way out here, so we need to get some sort of an answer for Tori. We got out our devices, set them up on the back of the truck, and frankly, the evidence we captured is is mind blowing. I mean, I think you guys are really there's just there's something going on there. Okay, guys. So obviously this rain is fucking insane. It totally fucked our shoot up tonight. But we can't come back tomorrow night because we already have a place where we need to be. So we decided to just sit on the back of our car and investigate because we literally it's still pouring. But if you'll see right here, we brought candles out earlier to emulate <clears throat> a ritual, like sort of some Bridgewater Triangle stuff. And if you look to our right, the forest is right there. Can't see shit. Let's see. There you go. Yeah. You see it? Yeah. yeah the forest is still all around us. All around us. So. We're still up here in the forest, but we've got these three spirit talkers running. The car's off, obviously, and I'm gonna turn on our REM pod bell. And this is a new device, so for me, what is this? What does this do? It's fucking dead still, bro. That was just charging for a fucking hour at her place. Surgery. Dude, something does not fucking like us. Charles. It's Charles. Charles doesn't like us? Do these three candles give you energy? So literally, bro. Feel. I want to just state, all day today, something has been f***ing with us, dude. <coughs> like, earlier, while we were filming with her, so many of our batteries died. They just kept dying, kept really? dying. And that it killed this device. And then we charged it the entire time we were at her place. And it's f***ing dead still. You know, it's also crazy is that 
right before we went in, we were talking about how we were all kind of getting signs that like something f***ed up was going to happen tonight. Yeah. Jesus. And look at this, bro. I mean, we were, this, you'd, you'd sit here in your car and think, this rain's terrible. I'm not going to get out and walk there. We were a f***ing mile back there when it started raining like this. Oh, yeah. That's f***ed. That's actually horrible. And Connor slip. I feel like I got fucking frostbite, frostburn, frostbite. But we're gonna do this, and then we're gonna do a little Estes session. We just want to see who the f is following us and taunting us. I'm if you're going to leave, I do not understand. What? I'm going to leave. I do not understand. What don't you understand? Why are you gonna leave? It's just so fucking creepy out here, man. Like, no. truly. If you're touching us, can you make us feel it? You're fighting against the rain. Did you hear me? No. Can you tell me, is there anything evil out here? If you can hear my voice! And you're an evil spirit! Or you're the man that's following Tori! Get the f over here! Oh, did you hear that? That was actually like a screech. Shooting. Oh. Thomas. Thomas. What was that? What the what f is that? Is that? What are you? Oh, what? That sounded like a gunshot. No way. Listen. Mm, you heard that, right? What was that? It was like, from over there. Here. Well, show yourself. Come out. I thought I just got touched in the back. Can you find my grave? My name is Fred. <gasps> oh. Fred? Fred, if that's you, give us a sign. Maybe Fred's a fucking murder victim that's out here. He died from a shooting. He's wanting us to find his grave. That's what I mean. He's buried out there. He fallen. Can we keep talking? Yeah. Fred, did you get shot? Did you get killed on this land? God. Fred! Where are you? God. You can't even see anything with an even night shot on. Her. I can't see her. Fred, were you the one who tied that girl up on the tree? God, I'm getting soaked. I was Emotion. stationed here. Stationed? Station. Like military? What? <laughs> you guys even notice the f three candles are burnt out? Oh, Jesus. <laughs> what the fuck? Dude, How did no one notice out. that? Dude, I didn't notice that at all. What? Oh, dude, I actually just got goosebumps. 12. 12. <sighs> That's wow. weird, dude. When did they go out? I don't know. Like, Maybe honestly. The wind hasn't been crazy or anything. It's weird that all three would go out. Isn't it a no, little that, bit? That's weird. And that, I don't know if it's the red lighting, but that just looks really f***ing creepy. Who blew out the candles? Did anyone blow out the candles? <gasps> oh my god! Oh! Three candles! Oh my god! We can't be screaming. He's here. He's here. You yelled for him. You called for him. He blew out three lights. That's how he showed he was here, and we didn't even notice it. 
Who's he? Is this the man that I called in who's taunting Tori? The evil demonic man that haunts these woods? Identify yourself. Why are you worried? Dude, that's fing insane. That actually, is three, crazy. Lights. three lights. Right after I noticed these candles burned out? No, right after. That's insane, dude. And he's here as well, right after we call him in. I have an idea. When we do this Estes. I was so scared. It's just the victims. You know what I mean? There's victims and then the f what the hell was that? That was like on the car. Hospital. Hospital. Oh! RAF. Royal Air Force enlisted. Or what did it say before? I was stationed here. I was here? stationed here. Royal Air Force. I don't, I don't know. But it's just weird. Do you like the forest? My happy place. Wow. Oh my god. Do you like and the forest? And it was forest? saying in there. It's I my like happy the place. Dude, this is insane right now. <gasps> insane. Like it's my happy place. Like who would think? Three different phones as well. And like this is all making sense with multiple I know. Do you Okay. I demand that you identify yourself. He's here. Who the f is this guy? People are coming. Dude, what if a car comes down the road? I think oh, someone's getting spooky. murdered because of her screaming. Jesus, dude. I have an idea. So, why don't we sit inside of the car and do the Estes? Oh, that's not a, that's a good I, idea. Did you hear that? Is that an airplane? It's thunder. Oh, shit. We could sit in the car, you two plan. could... <laughs> a plan! We're That's what I'm out. talking about! But I could sit in the back, and you guys in the two front, and shoot back, and I can shoot you. Cursed. <gasps> Cursed land. You're listening to me? Well, I'm about to listen to you. Yeah. We're gonna switch, the, switch this up and turn the tables on you. You're no longer gonna be the most powerful. This is fucking scary, bro. Dude, this is crazy. Also, I feel like I'm getting like hypothermia. If my back has been in the rain this whole time. <laughs> yeah, I've been in it. You wanna say anything else to us before we do, do this? This is your last chance to identify yourself before we talk. Maybe it's a, a victim. That's what it seems like. Alice, who's the angry, evil, the man, the demon? Please, before we go sit in the car. What's his name or what is he? Please help us. If you help us, we can help you. Potential. Potentially. Tell us, please. Is he an elemental? Is that why this weather is acting up? That was a woman yell. I worked here. That's what it said earlier, a bunch. This is getting creepy, actually. Okay, let's get in there. Hey everybody, it's Colin here. Thank you for watching today's video. Hello to all the new subscribers and hello to the rest of our beautiful, wonderful, spooky family. As you know, every single week here on the channel, we give away a free gift bag to one lucky viewer of the show. And this week to enter the contest, all you have to do is like today's video. Let's smash that like button and comment. That place is scary. In the comment section below. I'm gonna give y'all 10 seconds to do this now. 10, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. 
So go comment. You can comment multiple times. It helps the video so much. But anyways, let's get back to today's video. Thank you for listening to my little spiel. I love you guys so much and stay spooky. This kind of reminds me of Jurassic Park. <laughs> Dead ass, Where's dude. the T-Rex? Instead of a T-Rex, it's a f demon or a puck wedgie or a Bigfoot or a whatever. Hey. I've seen you before. Me? Are you talking to me? I followed you. Who did you follow? Are you talking about me? Did you see me when I came here last year? Whoa. Brilliant. Brilliant. Screaming. Okay, well... What is it that's in the forest? So many. Is it something evil? Cold darkness. Dude, I'm feeling so weird. There's such weird noises coming through. What the hell, dude? It's like screams. What the fuck? Scarlet. It's like screams. I know. Like you guys can hear how loud that is. I'm still here. Are you dark? Are you a dark energy? I know you. Are you talking about me? Connor or Colin? My name's Tyler, by the way. Three lights. Three lights again, dude. Hazel. Basement holds darkness. I didn't tell you that That's where the bodies are. There's a house. Yeah. That's right. So what are you? I feel like you really didn't like us being here today. What was the problem? She's over there. Hey there. <gasps> oh, I just heard a voice that said, pure nightmare. Kind of like that, pure nightmare. Is this the girl that wanted help? I'm here. Who's here? Hear us whisper. Hear us, like what he was just saying. Alice. Like, with it being, Alice again. And it was a whisper. <laughs> But, yeah, but we got Alice on the box. Yeah. I was like, one of the God, this names. is like such a terrible frequency. It's like painful. Alice, do you need help? I miss mommy. Quiet. Oh. I'm over here. Alice, what's the problem? Are you okay? The bad man. Who's bad? Who is the bad man? Is he a spirit? Is he a demon? Everything. He's everything. Everywhere. What's your name? My name's Connor. I'm Tyler. And this is Colin, who can hear you. I had a bad past. <coughs> so if the bad man is everything and everywhere. Oh, oh, I heard. He's standing by the gate. Like that. Two different voices. I'm happy He's to talk. standing by. The gate. I mean, dude, the gate to the forest is right there. It's mm -hmm. right there. And it's, he's happy, happy to talk. Okay. If you say you're everything and everywhere. Knock on the window? Would you say you're a devil then? If you can be everywhere. I know you. Why does it keep saying that? What the fuck? Remember me? I know you. Do you remember me? That's creepy. I need to know your name, or are you a devil that I've talked to I wonder to if this thing remembers me. That's true, because Colin's also been out here. No, that's true. Who do you, that's what I'm trying to like, who do you remember? Do you remember Colin? Who do you remember? <laughs> oh, oh man, a male voice. Hey James, just like that. <sighs> Not the name we're looking for, but that's funny. Yeah, it's my name. It's watching you. Maybe you better hide! Connor, it's watching you, you better hide. <laughs> I don't mean to laugh. Oh my Dude, God. I'm getting f***ing creeped out back here. Do you have a problem with me? All three. It has a problem with all three. Everyone. 
It's also kind of strange. Bleeding skulls. Maybe thinking about how like there's three candles that we lit. Cry. Representing ha -ha. each one of us. Each one of us and it blew, blew all, all out. out. And now it's got a problem with all of us. So you really don't like people coming out to the forest. Is it because you're hiding your secrets back there? Did you force us out? You'll never kill me. Did you force us out of the forest? New target. Tell what? people my story. Well, then what's your story? Tell, uh, I couldn't tell if that said. Bring him here! Oh, God, I keep hearing this creepy man voice. Yum. Like this guy's. Mom! Clan Shad. Would you want us to do a Ouija board out here? Dude, it's like my head. Tattoo. Everything's just hurting. Dude. You got a planchette? Guys, look at this. Stay spooky. Look to your right. A demon here. Dude, look to your right, a demon He's here? He's here. And what's to the right? The gate. Oh my god. Oh, dude, I feel something really f***ing creepy. I don't know if you're seeing anything to the right, but I feel like it just shifted, bro. It said to the right on here, right? Oh, like I'm feeling really, oh. oh I just heard he like a, that. like that. So are you calling me out? Beware. Beware. Everyone is Go away. sold to me. Dude, this is very strange. Fuck you. Like, go away. Beware. Fuck you. Why? Why do you really want us to go? There's some, there's someone. I wander these grounds. Dude. Everywhere. Everywhere. Everything's making so much sense. Everything and everywhere, I keep hearing those words. It's everything and everywhere. So what is that? What are you? What do you label yourself as? Through a ritual. Came through a ritual. Street. I need a little bit more information. Don't trust him. Who are you? You're being very vague. I like swimming. Woman in white. Ugh. Another man's voice. Followed you back. Followed us back. You followed us from the uh, water. From the pond. No. Where did you from? Find us? My voice is heard. Where did you follow us? Roll. From? Oh, I heard roll your window. No. Yes, it's me. <laughs> what is going? This is so strange. So it sounds like I you're... saw you. It sounds like you're really just trying to scare us, but you're not really answering our questions other than saying that. You, you know, have no idea. Why are you trying to scare us? Why don't you answer us? I need blood. Well, you're, not, oh. you're not getting blood. You're not getting it. Not from me. They left me here. Who left you? Puck. Puck Wedgie. Did you encounter a puck wedgie? Don't. I'm assuming this is somebody different. Tootsie Roll. Tide. Find my body. We can't find your body. I feel like there's so many people talking. It sounds like there's so many now. How many spirits are talking? How many are here? Plans. Plans. Oh, I just had a really creepy woman's voice. Look outside. How many spirits? Oh, surrounded. Surrounded. Look outside. Surrounded. But it wouldn't make Rope sense. Torture. 48. Rope torture. The girl was literally tied to a tree with, with ropes. ropes. But then going back. Run! Oh, you turn the lights on. I'm like, what the hell? Scratch. Scratch. Oh. I heard her. You hurt the girl. Sound like a yell from the outside. There's so much bad. Hell. Demon, I heard demon. I heard demon. Demon. Dude, what the f Help, too. Help, there's a demon. Like guys, this Ugh, is that was creepy. What is it? Are we talking it to It feeds we... on something. I heard it feeds on, but I couldn't tell. What do you feed on? Come on, tell us. What is it? What do you want? Babies. That's f You feed on Children babies. too! Babies and children too. 
Oh, and then I heard, shh. Play. Go play. I'm not playing. With me. Where are you? Out in, oh, 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 out in the rain. I keep hearing this fucking creepy voice. It's like, the rain, baby. I'm not going And this frequency rain. is getting louder and just weirder sounding, man. Mickey Mouse. All right, well, we're gonna pull him out of this. In the a cult. Second. Is there any lives left? on? It's part of a cult. Oh, I feel like somebody's I touching my neck, too. dude. I feel terrible right now, and he goes right after his neck. I'll affect you, and he says his neck. I feel like we should pull him out. God. Dude, what the? F Hold up. We were getting some of the craziest shit on Spirit Talker that was going along exactly with what you were saying. Dude, it was insane. Dude, please tell me that made sense because that, that was made very so, It creepy. made too much sense. It said planchette and you said uh, tattoo. Oh, After it was oh. talk, and then it, you said, or something said James. I don't know if it was Spirit Talker or you. Dude, I mean, everything just went together with each other and it was insane. Like, what, what, what were the takeaways? Just um, something is something doesn't. Really it said rope torture. What? Yeah. Oh, dude, yeah. Rope torture. What the fuck, yeah. dude? I've never heard it, it say that. Archangel. It said, uh, I mean, she's over there. I had a bad pass. It's watching you cry, planchette. A demon here. Go away. My voice is heard. Exposed. Like, and that's just on this spirit talker, not even on that one. Yo, that is It was calling mad, all of creepy. us out, and that it did not want us in that forest. It's just weird. This is great. <laughs> it, it's weird in a way, right? Because it doesn't, it, it never, you said demon at the end, but it never described what Follow us right. it is. <gasps> it said that right. multiple times. Dude, it keeps saying I to go right. I remember it said something about a gate. And go play in the rain. At the, at, Tyler. Yeah, at the end, it told me to go out and go play. Really? He said, go play with them out in the rain. And Follow us ahead. <sighs> what the dude, fuck, that, dude? I mean, dude, this has been this whole session Just the entire time. Back into the forest. Dude, it wants us to go back. It wants us to go back. And fat chance. How fucking creepy is that, though, honestly? Yeah, it wants us to go back. Like, now, follow us right, follow us back? Something, something seen us and wanted to follow us but it said it didn't come from the water, but it never said where it came from. And it would not tell us its name either. And it kept saying, I remember you, I remember you, but it was never saying any type of name, and it never said what it was. I think it remembers both of you. I feel fucking weird after that, man. Dude, I don't feel good at all. Well, one of the last things it said was, I'll affect you. On there, yeah. and then and then you said I felt I feel something on my neck. <sighs> yeah, really? yeah, right, right, right after. I really did feel like it was like a little like. They literally stroke said that, and immediately neck. like while it was saying, you're like, I feel like there's something touching my neck. Insane, I feel like dude. so dizzy and like. Cold. I have a terrible headache. Oh, that my, might just be from the cold. My head's hurting. Mm -hmm. My stomach's hurting. I feel so off. Might have hit my head when I fell too. Really? Maybe. I hope not, dude. Did you? How do you not know? Adam. Well, that was certainly My very. My voice is heard. Yeah, it's heard. This was very, uh, very scary, man. Oh, yeah. yeah. This. I can't believe that creepy ass forest is like still to our right right now. I know, dude. It's still wanting us to go back. Is there anything else you have to say before we go? Any final words? What if it's like, see you later, I'll follow you. I'm the demon. We're, we're I closer. Just, I just got the feeling like he's just saying, we're closer now. That's a very creepy final word. Like, yeah. come closer, we're closer than ever before, I'm closer to you now. 
Well, guys, I think we should get the f out of here. I think it's time to call it a night. We won't hurt you. Dude, it literally goes, come closer, we won't hurt you. It's like, come play in the rain. That's f***ing scary behavior. I don't like this, dude. Just with the night, with how it all unfolded, I don't feel good. And it's still pouring rain out. Pouring rain. This took a really, really dark turn. It did. It really did. She wasn't wrong. Tori was no, not wrong. No. I really hope this thing doesn't follow us. Remember, we're protected by a higher Remo power. Scottish. I was about to say, remove, like, you can't stay. Yeah, we're gonna remove you. We have a white light cast over. I just bit my tongue. Ow. That's a really weird timing to bite your tongue. Yeah. Blood sacrifice. We have, I have a higher power and white light is surrounding all three of us. You cannot follow either any one of us. You have to stay here. It's the end of our session. All right. Thanks for coming out tonight, bud. Hey, I appreciate it, guys. This was great, you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, great, great to wait. <laughs> to to this one. It was something. I'm glad yeah, this, I... This was an experience. I'm yeah. glad I was able to take you guys on an adventure. Yeah. That almost led to death. Dude. Patience. <laughs> we almost so became patients. patients. In the hospital earlier tonight, yeah. she was talking about. All right, man. Yeah, it's that time. I mean, what time is it? It is. That's the final thing. So we have, we have a, an evil demon and a victim still. But who's the victim? Oh no. It said rope torture. You are nice. Thank you. It's really strange, man. All right. So we're here right now, back at the exact place where last night we were contacting this thing. And it's just as eerie in the daylight. If you look around, it's a very cold New England day here, Freetown State Forest. And I just don't think this story's over. This is one of those cases that, I don't know, we had some really bad nightmares last night. This camera battery is going to die, so we're going to have to talk about them in a second. But I just wanted to come back and say, once again, whoever's here, you might have followed us last night already, but you have to stay here. Please get off of us. So much mystery here, man. It's a creepy place. So right now, before we leave, we just wanted to take a look back here because this is the area where we felt like this evil was coming from. Oh, dude. When I was here years ago, this is where I had an encounter. That chimney, dude? Yeah. How fucking freaky is that? Just one of the creepy things you find here at Freetown. It looks very freaky. I mean, really though, when you think about it, Imagine if you were coming out here to do rituals, even after the original cult, this would be a perfect place to burn some sort of material, to start a fire, to hold a ritual, an old abandoned chimney from who knows when. And what, what used to be here, a whole house obviously, what happened to the people that lived in this house? <laughs> It's crazy, it might not even been a house. It might have been just a standalone chimney. That's so strange. Like, I mean, like, look how f***ing big this thing is. Right? It's just one of those things. It's like, 
imagine what might have happened here. We'll never know exactly what, but I'm just saying, I mean, look at, there's still tons of ash and burn stuff. People still light fires in here. Who fucking knows what they're doing? Normally any other place, I'd just say, ah, oh, camping, but in the Freetown State Forest, there's no telling what went down. I wonder what this thing is that's out here. Is it a fucking elemental? Is it an indigenous spirit? Is it a serial killer? Is it just a demon straight up conjured through all these rituals? There's so many possibilities. Aliens, fuck. Extraterrestrial beings. What's creepy is this is the exact time of day when I heard Bigfoot out here. Really? It was like right now, like mid afternoon. Mid afternoon and just from way deep down there. Fucking eerie. Hell no. Well, so creepy, man. I mean, honestly, it's a beautiful forest. I'm standing among you. Whatever this thing is, it likes to say that it's like following you. It's right there. Footsteps among you. Or footsteps follow. I'm standing among you. I said footsteps follow? Among us? You can't follow us though, all right? Yeah. How do you get a spirit to not follow you? Get your ass back. I don't think that's gonna work. Not with that attitude. <laughs> all right. All right, on to the next location. Let's walk on back. Beautiful day though. All right, so we are driving right now to our location. We, have, we filmed these videos back to back, so we're actually driving to the Norwich Asylum right now to film our next Go investigation. Go past this light, then use the right lane to take a slight right turn to merge onto US 6 West toward Providence. I can say a little bit more. <laughs> but Tyler just texted us and said that he had like some sort of nightmare last night and I told him to just call me and explain it so he's about to call me in a second and I figured we'd, we'd record it while he uh, tells us what happened. I definitely, I forgot to mention this, him saying that. In 15 miles, keep right onto I-95 South. But yet, yeah, hearing Tyler say that made me remember that I, I didn't have any like nightmares specifically last night but I did have just like really a lot of trouble sleeping. What about you? I, don't know, I was having some really strange dreams last night. Like those dreams where you wake up and you're like, what the hell was that? Uh -huh. I can't necessarily remember what I was dreaming about because I feel like there, were, there was a lot of dreams that I had, but it's just been a really weird day. Like we both just feel like strange, but I mean also just all the running around in the woods that we were doing just wore us out. I mean, this is also at the end of a trip where we've been hitting some of the most haunted places in America, too. Yeah, and here we are in insane traffic. That doesn't help either. Not a bit. Tyler? What's up, dude? What's up, man? Hey, I'm recording this for our video, by the way. Oh, really? Yeah, just to let you know. No, no, that's completely fine, dude. What? I wanted to talk to you guys, actually, about something. Yeah, what happened? Dude, so I seriously didn't wake up till a little bit ago. It's already like past three, which is wild enough, right? <laughs> yeah, it's 3.15, it's 3.18 right now. <laughs> dude, dude, I had an even longer night when I got home. I don't, dude, so I go to bed normally completely fine. I've never had this happen to me at all before. Um, coming back from a location or something like that, whether it had to do with it or not, but Dude, I was like, I wish I could remember how it went or what exactly happened. But dude, all I remember is just waking up with like fear from like nightmares or something like that. But the one thing that I can say, dude, is that I woke up one time from it. Now, I didn't fully 
see anything, whether my eyes were playing tricks with me or something. Dude, I could have sworn I saw some black shadow in the corner of my room. And honestly, I ignored it and just went back to bed. But with everything that was happening, dude, I was freaked. So you were waking up, like, just, you can't remember your dreams, just like something kept waking you up? Dude, I just couldn't remember, but I know that I was waking up from just being scared from whatever I was dreaming about. But then like seeing some black shadow in my room. Well, that's, that's scary. scary. That's exactly what I was saying. I was having a lot of just like strange dreams last night. And like, I can't remember at all what it was, but I just know that I was like freaked out. Like what the hell was that? Connor, do you have anything like that? I just, I couldn't sleep. That was the only thing for me is like, I didn't have anything necessarily scary, but just like, it was like really hard for me to fall asleep and just obviously I felt just like weird after It's also after crazy. Filming. I mean, Tori saying that like she goes to the forest and then she had a shadow man follow her back home. Oh shit, she did say that actually. Well fuck. I think you're screwed, Tyler. <laughs> Dude, I better not be anything, nothing better following me back. <laughs> you know what's scary now? thinking about it dude connor remember in that last session how it was saying i remember you all and just going against oh all yeah that wait oh what the f tyler what the f dude hold on my phone that's weird it put just on speaker disconnected our tyler can you hear me what the f it just disconnected me from the bluetooth oh what really? the f yeah no, now you're back all right that was strange so Basically, just to sum it up for the video, you couldn't sleep, you were having bad dreams that you can't remember, and you feel like, out of the corner of your eye, you glimpsed a shadow Oh, man. dude, no, I, I completely saw something, but I looked away because I just was not having it. Oh, so you actually, like, looked I at it. I 100% saw something in the corner of the room. Not in the corner of my eye, the corner of my room. F that, dude. I'm sorry we and it was, had that it, idea it to go called. out there. <laughs> What did I it? mean, hey, don't be sorry. This is what we do, you know what I mean? But this is the first time I've ever had an experience like this that I just can't explain. Did it seem like a man? Or what did it seem it like? It seemed like a taller man-type figure, yeah. If I'm gonna go off of what I see fast, you know what I mean? Damn, dude. That's like, that's concerning. That's very concerning. I mean, luckily, nothing feels off at the moment, but I mean, Hopefully that's just it, you know? That was though what Hopefully she said. Hopefully it goes said. over to you guys. Yeah, she said that a shadow thing has followed her home. We didn't even tell him that. That's what's yeah. f***ing trippy about this. Like, we didn't even No, I have that. no idea <laughs> what you guys fully talked about, and, you know what I mean? Yeah. Other than she has some, yeah. I mean, honestly, I forgot about that until Connor <laughs> even just brought that up. That's f***ing crazy, dude. It's a little scary. But, well, that's crazy, man. Make sure to try to protect yourself however you want to do that because apparently this thing will follow you according to Tori. Maybe you're giving her a little bit of a break though. Fuck Dude, imagine she like reaches back out to you guys and be like, hey, nothing's here anymore. Yeah, it's gone. <laughs> yeah, and then you reach back out three days from now. Guys, there's a f***ing <laughs> shadow man and he's watching me pee. Jesus Christ. I hope yeah. not. I hope not, buddy. Well, we're sending you our good, good, good vibes and good energy. Yeah, maybe. Well, shit, yeah, brother. Why do you have to follow me? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm actually, I'm glad that it didn't follow me this time. Me <laughs> Sorry, Tyler. Jesus, dude. Well, you want to pause that, Connor? Yep. I don't know what it is about this forest, but it just seems like there's a overwhelming just darkness and evil that is just within these forests. I mean, all the murders that have happened, bodies dumped, it's aliens, everything that you could name has happened in this forest. And there's so much mystery behind it. I mean, most of these things have never been solved, caught on camera, but I really feel like I mean, what we had happen in this video shows, at least somewhat, how dark this place can be. And I definitely do not want to go back. So the Freetown State Forest, I mean, this is just a, 
The stories in that place are heartbreaking, they're disturbing, they're harrowing. You have serial killers, you have cult murders, you have one-off kills, you have indigenous burial mounds, all sorts, every type of spirit and energy. Ghosts, demons, pukwudgies, they're all inside of that forest. And it's a huge forest. I mean, it's just so dark and ominous when you're back there. The, like Connor said, the way the trees bend over the paths and it's truly like when you're walking through there, people don't understand how scary that is. You're 45 minutes into the forest, pitch black 360, nobody around you, nobody to seek for help. Um, and something was targeting us, something, I don't know, you know, I don't know what it is. Now, Tori said that after the investigation, she had a bunch of stuff happen in her apartment. And it's only been a couple days since we filmed that video, so I'm curious to see, you know, what she's gonna record next, but there's just, there's so much mystery here. I don't know if the forest chose her, if the spirits of victims and killers attached to her, there's just, I mean, there's just so much mystery in those woods. And I'd love to go back, but I think I'm good for now. I think that was good enough that one time <laughs> this year. But thank you guys for watching. This was an extremely fun and just tiring video to film. We cannot thank you all enough for watching. Stay curious. Keep investigating, guys. Thanks again for watching. And stay spooky. Hello! <laughs>